This week, three sides of the coin. It's the Kiss Cruise recap. Mark's back. We've got Frank from Hate Breed, who was also on the cruise. Really fun discussion. Most importantly, Mark seems to think the women on the cruise were raging for him. Is that true? I got to hear. Of course it's not. Somebody who was on the Kiss Cruise has to tell me, were you raging for Mark? This is Three Sides of the Coin, talking all things Kiss. I want to rock and roll all night. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Three Sides of the Coin. Uh, Two of us right now, Mike and Tommy. Mark is here. Mark is here. Mark leaves. Um, It's typical. He comes and goes. He sets his own schedule. It's like he almost owns this show. Didn't we hire him? Um, Anyway, we've got an incredible show this week. We're going to skip comments. I will make a quick mention right up front here. We are going to have a three sides of the coin Georgia meetup to celebrate Lisa's 50th birthday party. It will be Friday, December 3rd at the Wild Wing Cafe in Alpharetta, Georgia. Show up around 8 p.m. The band starts at 9. Celebrate with Lisa. Sing happy birthday to her. Please do. You're all invited. Um, all right. So this week, we've got a returning guest. Frank from Hate Breed is back. He was on the Kiss Cruise. He sits down with us and Mark, talks all about the Kiss Cruise, the good. It wasn't really any bad. A couple yeah. of things that they would have liked a little differently, but basically two thumbs up on the cruise. Talks set lists, everything else. And we actually have a really kind of deep discussion at the very end with Frank about touring bands and COVID and the COVID protocol sort of tied into the, the Rolling Stone article and what was his take? Cause he just got off the road, you know, hate breed was opening for Megadeth. So that was a major tour, just like the kiss tour. So stick to the end for a very cool discussion. Otherwise let it roll. We got Frank from hate breed joining us. Want to get your official three sides of the coin logo and shocker tee? Now you can. We ship worldwide. Get yours online at shop.threesidesofthecoin.com. So for our huge uh, Kiss Cruise recap that we teased everybody about last week, um, we've only got Frank from Hate Breed, who was on the cruise, apparently, Mark. Hey, Mark, are you out there? Mark? Mark's a no-show. Yes, sir. For his own show about recapping the Kiss Cruise. Because let me, let me just give everybody a little bit of background here. So Kiss Cruise is done chatting with Mark online. And Mark is like, that Frank guy, we had him on. So cool. Such a great guy. He wants to come on and he's going to join the recap with me. And he's like, Mike, go get, go confirm, get Frank on the show. I'm like, okay, immediately get it done. And I'd let, let Mark know. And Mark's like, this is going to be awesome. This is great. This is great. Today, Mark sends a message. Uh, I'm slammed. I'm going to be at least a half hour late getting here. Now we know that a half hour late means grumpy Mark, (laughs) which means he may not show up at all. So, so Tommy and I will give our recap of the cruise. It was fun. Thanks everybody. We'll see you next week. (laughs) Um, (laughs) It's just like, I don't know, Tommy, this is just expected, right? It it really, it's like, what what do you got to do to get him to show up for something that he knows more about than either one of us? Well, considering he was the one that went and we didn't, I I was joking with Tommy, Frank. I'm like, you know, about the only way we can make sure that Mark shows up is if we guarantee a DoorDash dinner delivery as soon as he sits down (laughs) and logs in. Oh, wow. Like, how about about that? What, 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 you know, maybe we should do a GoFundMe with all of our listeners to raise money to feed Mark every week. So he shows up on time to the show. 
a per diem, if you will. So to speak, yes. yes exactly, yes. yes. He gets free food. If he shows up on time and is logged in successfully, now these, there's all these requirements. We will have DoorDash deliver a different meal every week. I mean, who wouldn't want that? No, I, 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 hey, that's some incentive, I got to say. <laughs> I mean, in, you know, look at Mark. Food, that is the incentive. That's the incentive <laughs> that drives him away from recording with us. It's like, okay, dinner's ready. Mark's got to leave now. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, he's 0 for 2, I think, now, because the last one, I think he was – in and out when we were when when you had me on the first time so it's oh. becoming very problematic yeah you know a bit of an ego there mm-hmm. yeah we need him here Alex. we're doing a cruise recap so yeah really yeah, no i mean shit. seriously but uh you know there, there, we have plenty of content and so you know. so so it, it's all on you frank all on you now this whole mm-hmm. success and the quality of this show rests all on your the way, shoulders right Uh-oh. on your shoulders brother <laughs> so if any of you are pissed off when you watch this send it to frank Uh-oh. exactly i don't want to hear about it anymore. yeah Ex- exactly not no no actually pressure, send frank. it to mark send it yeah, to mark. right right mark's the problem yeah exactly yeah. uh so frank <laughs> uh you know how well, let's just i mean we don't need to go into your history because we did that the last time but um how many kiss cruises have you been on uh Believe it or not, because obviously I'm working around our touring schedule as well. Yeah. You know, yep. and, and a Kiss Cruise isn't going to take precedent over a Hapri tour. So, um, oh, how dare you say that to Kiss fans? No, I know. Well, you know, <laughs> I got That's lucky. Blasphemous. I, I got lucky, you know, five or six years ago, and, and my bass player had a kid. So he likes to be home for Halloween to go trick or treating with the kid now. And oh, the Kiss Cruise follows around, falls on Halloween every year. How convenient for me. Yep. So, it all worked out, um, and I and this was my eighth in a row. But I got to say, um, I wasn't booked on this cruise. I wasn't going to go because um, for the Kiss Cruisers out there, and you guys may know, around Kiss Cruise five. So I've been th- I've been on three through ten now. Around Kiss okay. Cruise five, they took the picture with the band away. Yep, you, you yeah. weren't you couldn't do that on the boat anymore. That was a big deal. I mean, because obviously that's a that's. For the for the guests paying the money and going and attending that. Holy the- crap! Hold on, Mark's here. Do we have Uh-oh. to do we have to take back everything we said? Because he's only no, because he's only- late. He's okay. Hold on, yeah. hold on. Let's let's get him connected. See how well this works. He's coming in live, folks. Because you you Probably don't know what is accidentally getting on. You don't know you don't know what you're gonna get when we bring Mark in live. Mark, we're already recording. Yeah, what are you gonna do? <laughs> and, and and we already ripped on you yeah, totally geez. ripped on you we're like we're doing a kiss cruise recap without the guy who went on the kiss cruise i can leave <laughs> <laughs> loving the, loving the shirt everybody i, I take hey, it wherever I, I take it wherever i go with me amen brother nice. one of my faves as well yep so um, the iron fist. So we're just we we're literally just getting started here, Mark. Yeah, so you're you're it's not. You're actually, I'm actually about twenty minutes ahead of schedule. I know. Than I thought. I let me tell. I'm telling you what, man. I came home from because we stayed till Sunday night. Because we we drove from Miami to uh, to Clearwater and then just fucking partied like madmen and then uh and by partying like madmen you mean just eating crap loads of shrimp and crap i swear to god it's all like partying with men (laughs) i i tell you what just we it was it was real because the we got we drove across state and the fucking weather sucked so you know when uh life hands you lemons you know make lemonade so we uh we had a fucking just a ton of fun so you know, it was all good. Anyways, where were you uh, so far in the tales of? Oh, uh, we were just your... finding out from Frank his uh, Kiss Cruise history. Mm-hmm. So he yes. was just getting into that. Hold on, hold on. Thank you, Frank. Hey. <laughs> oh yeah, I like that. You are welcome. Um, I was just oh. explaining to the guys about um, I wasn't booked on this cruise because um, if you remember around Kiss Cruise Five, they they took the picture with the band away. I thought mm-hmm. that was a big that was a big blow to the cruisers because that was obviously a big deal. Um, 
And then this year when they announced originally that they were going to take the indoor makeup show away and just do a general admission pool deck. And I, I'm grandfathered into those seats in the front. So I was like this, so at some point you got to tell these guys, no. So I was like, I'm just not going to go. I'm just not going to go. What, did, what did you just say, Frank? I know. I, I think I, you had a, I think the, the, the video skipped or something. You, you said some, something about saying no to kiss. Sometimes I, you got to <laughs> sometimes it, I, I don't, Hey, it was no, no to kiss, no to six man, no to Norwegian. But I'm like, so they want to charge more. They don't want to do the indoor makeup show. I'm like, I'm just going to not go. Cause last year I had the meet and greet with Paul. I had the, uh, I won the pick throwing contest with Gene. Uh, it probably wasn't going to top that last experience for me. So um, I originally didn't book and then everybody revolted and I lost my seats and they, and because everybody got mad and COVID and all that, Oh, the cruise is back. The indoor show's back free alcohol for anybody that wants to go on. It's unlimited. So basically what, what, what you're saying is it didn't matter what kiss gave you free alcohol brought you back. Free alcohol sounded like such a great idea before I got on that boat. <laughs> but let me tell you after the fifth day at sea, it was the dumbest idea. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, but it was we must, it, we it, we it must was have ran into each other probably a dozen times or more in the, in the few days it seemed like we we're uh, fist bumping every uh every two hours or so yeah, it, was, sure. it was pretty cool sure. was. Uh, i got so a anyways, question though wait a minute i got a question for frank so, yes you're a total oh, forget. <laughs> that's an old joke with tommy yeah so frank <laughs> when you said no and you weren't gonna go did did sixth man or anyone ever reach out to you to say, well, why do you not want to book to sweet to sweeten the deal just for you? Well, no, well, just you know, An I mean, Anthony they... Anthony, who's the CEO of Six Man, is a good friend of mine. Um, oh. and I just I just expressed my um, you know, expressed my reasoning for not doing it. You know what I mean? And then that was that. And, you know, it wasn't nothing that it wasn't nothing that he was gonna he wasn't gonna make it so Kiss was gonna play the indoor show. He he doesn't have those powers so. Um, but the photo thing, eh, I understand they don't want to stand around in the booths all the time. Well, if you look at the photos from the kiss crews, they're from the waist up, you know, these guys, they could stand in their regular shoes, you know, and do all the photos and stuff. So, um, you know, that was one thing. And then the takeaway that the, but you know, one of the things that's so special about the crews is you, you're seeing them in a small capacity room and to have those seats up front, it's just incredible. And the fact that that was, I, I'm not one of these people that's going to show up three, four hours early, sit in the sun just to get close to the stage for a general admission pool show. So, you know, all things, it was kind of a bummer too, because the mm -hmm. boat was going to Belize and Honduras, which are places I've never been before um but it all came back it all worked out and uh we went on the cruise again and it was a great time i'm glad i went that's great yeah i i concur i, I i've said this to anyone who will listen you know i've i've been on all 10 and this one is Dang. either the best or right up there man this one was really really fun and i gotta give it up to uh sixth man and and norwegian cruise line and obviously the hottest band in the world um frank you know you can stop me at any time here but i thought especially if you guys were try paying, frank try to stop them no <laughs> but if, if 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 you guys remember the jericho cruise took off a week before the kiss cruise yeah and, and i don't follow that and don't remember chris is a friend of ours and he's a great guy and everything but you know i don't follow that sort of genre i mean look i know a lot of fans who watch the show do and i think it's awesome but it's just kind of out of my wheelhouse anyways they start seeing all these like covid nightmares about the testing and the long lines and horrid all these horror stories so when i got there i was like oh my god you know just to let everybody know because i've had more than a few people ask me everybody on the ship had to take a test like four days prior mike what's that called p pts or sort of uh the p pcr, PCR test is PCR. the test that takes 20 it, 24 to 48 hours to get a really accurate result. Yeah. The the uh, fast test has questionable reliability. All right, but anyways, just so you guys know, on, on Monday, and, and, and Liz and I left um, to go to Miami on Thursday, and we boarded on Friday. But anyways, and, and, I, and again, I thought they did a great job with that. We took our tests here in, in Michigan. Um, and we, you know, we printed off our things. We get in line 
And the line went was very, very, very underlined that three times well run. Um, don't get me wrong. You, it still took a couple of hours for the entire boarding process, but they added that extra hump where we had to, you know, take a COVID test now, but it was, it was handled very well. And then, you know, after we did that and, and you got screened, then they allowed you, allowed you to board. And, you know, you had to, again, you know, scan your, uh, your carry-ons and stuff. But I mean, it was just very, very, it was very, very well run, very well organized. And I know a lot of people across the country are, whenever they go anywhere, they're experiencing, you know, staff shortages. I didn't notice a single staff shortage from the time we got there to the time we got off the boat. Uh, the boat was very, and, and, I, and I'm just going to, I'm telling you the honest guy truth, because if it sucked, I'd tell you. Um, we got on the boat, no problem. We probably had the best porter we've ever had, and, and all of them have been excellent. But we had a really good one for our room. Um, the, the food was plentiful. The drinks, like, like Frank was saying, you know, they had the open bar. Um, <laughs> Man, and, and, and look, I wish all my, my friends, you know, from, you know, your, I wish Adrian and, and Pierre and, and, and Darren and Ash and, you know, and all those guys, Alex, I wish all of them were on the boat. But, you know, the fact was there's about a thousand fewer people than normal. I got to admit, man, it was nice getting an elevator. You didn't have to wait for stuff. You walked right up to the bar. You got your drinks. The, the merch thing flowed well. I'm telling you, 10 out of 10 for this cruise, uh, just for convenience. And uh, we can talk a bit, especially Frank and I, because I, I don't know his opinion on it. But, um, you know, I thought the shows were great. I thought the the bands were were really good. Um, it's just, I, again, I'm still ha I still have a cruise high from this one. I had so much fun. Cannot wait to do it again next year. Well, let, let me ask both you guys, and I don't want you to go into great detail on this, but once you were on the ship and the ship was sailing, was there anything different that was being done because of COVID protocols on the ship? Oh. I don't. I don't, I don't think so. I mean, there's certain no. things that, that were, that maybe you couldn't do like you, you could last time, like, you know, those special cups that they put out every day, you just bought those in the merch because they didn't want the lines of people at the bar to get them every day, small things like that. Frank, but, um, I was told the cup thing was because so many people complained. Oh, really? See, I didn't yeah, know it had nothing to do with COVID. They just okay. did just for everybody that knows. Matter of fact, my cups complain are about what it's a, it's a cup. No, 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 because a lot of people would buy, I know personally, I know people, I, I believe they put a special drink in it every year. And a lot yeah. of people are going, you know what? I, I, I'm dumping it out. I don't drink alcohol sure. or I find it gross. No, it was a legitimate complaint. And, and lots of people said, hey, can we just buy the cups? And they're like, no, you got to get it with the drink. Well, this year, they're like, you know what? We're just going to sell the cups in the merch booth. And then that ends that whole problem. And that was what had nothing to do with COVID. And that was told to me by somebody from Sixth Man. Oh, wow. See, I heard differently, but that makes all the sense in the world. Um, did they sell as much as they normally would because they did them that way? I don't know. You know, the whole, I've, I was told there's tons of cups left, but, um, you know, I don't know if it's the whole buzz of going at, yo, you got to get to the bar this time of day and go get that. Oh, I know it's not. But I will say this about the cups. They were the coolest cups that I've ever seen on the boat because every year it's either, you know, one day's red, one day's blue, one day's yes. green, one day's purple, or one, they're black cups with that color ink on them. This year they did like a white clear cup with the Psycho Circus um, graphics printed in white on the cup. But when you put your drinks and, and the ice in the cup, one cup changes purple, one cup changes green, one cup changes red. So they, they're they sick. They're they're totally like the coolest cups they did this year. And I, I believe me, I wasn't mad about paying five bucks a cup than whatever they were charging with the drink uh, in the prior years. Well, sure. yeah, yeah, I mean, that, you know, this, this, this year you got the alcohol free and you had to buy the cup. Sure. <laughs> sure. And I will tell you, as far as uh, merch things that they gave us this year, boy, they, they fucking ramped it up, baby. They oh. ran it up. Yeah, the robe, the robe, the the silk I robe. Happen, I happen to have one right yeah, here. There you go. This is on the back of the robe. Yep. 
black is that, silk. Is, is, is that like an actual embroidery patch or is that a silk yes. screen? Beautifully, beautifully oh, embroidered. Well done. Yep. Look at that. Yeah. It's a nice. And on the front, on the front crest is the same thing. It's got that. I think it says Psycho Circus Kiss Cruise 10, right? Y yes, correct. And it's but black. Very, yes. Black silk. Silky black. Yes. But it really it goes, goes well with your blue Speedo. <laughs> oh, you should have. Look, man, the girls were raging. They're like, oh, my God, there's the round Adonis. And I was like, you know what I mean? I was like, what's that? Uh, what was that one? Raging. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, homework question. If you were a girl and you were on the Kiss Cruise, did you rage for Mark? Please. Oh, how dare they? Did even one person <laughs> other than Liz rage for Mark? Yeah, a bunch, actually. <laughs> I want to meet the person that raged for Mark. Hold on, must the have been women on money. The women. Yeah. Well, Tommy, Tommy, quit ruining it. <laughs> <laughs> Hundred dollar bills will do great things for you. So, <laughs> well, did they know what? that it was a one dollar bill and you just scribbled one hundred hey, in the look, corner? Look, right? after after a few drinks, they don't know. <laughs> I tell you what. Uh, also, too. Um, you know, and, and by the way, I'm doing it this way because I did read a certain comment on our page that I don't do show and tell well. That the ah, lovely and well, that's very true. <laughs> we know there's no denying historically, Mark is not well known for show and tell. I no, bet he's not good at it. You bet you probably failed that in kindergarten. I probably did. So, anyways, here's here's another, and again, this was the good part. And I, and again, I, I'm, I'm being totally serious. No, this was only like I think 10, 15 bucks. That's pretty sharp. My point is if you went on the cruise and you wanted to get something special, you know, and I'll show you the back. It's very cool. You know, these are the kind of collectibles that I think are cool because everybody they're very affordable. I mean, if you just went on and you want, you know, I want something to remember the cruise by. And this thing's heavy too. Meeting Mark wouldn't be enough. You have to go buy a coin. There you go. There you go. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't know. I thought that was a really, really cool, uh, really cool thing. I, I One thing I didn't like so much in Frank. I, Frank, did you buy much merch? I got a few things. Yeah, I, I got I got a shirt before the cruise that you can yeah, order. Too, and then I got I ended up getting a shirt there and I. Ended up getting the cups. I always get the poker chips. I got the bucket hat. There were some things I got. Only thing I this is this is something that came in our room. Yeah. And again, these these things, the robe and this poster, are things that came in the room. You didn't have to buy. This is just part no. of being being on the Kiss Cruise. Now, yeah. the only thing that I don't like about this, again, I'm not crazy about the art. I, I'm the, the clown thing. Just, eh, eh, just ain't my thing. You know. So, um, but this is what the shirts, most of the shirts. Yeah, you know, I, 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 now, now see, I, I, while I'm not a huge fan of the, that record, but I, I do enjoy the themes of the cruises. Um, so I thought that a lot of the merch looked really good this year. I got the shirt with the shark on the front and, um, you know, there was a lot of cool stuff this year between the cups and the merchandise and they always do cool things. I mean, and that Holy grail thing that we got in our room, which I hope oh, I'm you still going to, yeah, yeah, I, I got it. I'm waiting for you to show that. So um, another thing, and I, they've passed these out every cruise and I love these. I never opened mine. Surprise, surprise. But I, I love these dog tags. Yep. And again, these are things that they just give to us. Sure. And the luggage tags before the cruise. Like yes. That. Yeah. I, yeah. I was going to get to uh, get, cause you get this thing like a month or two before the, yeah. before the cruise. And uh, just like Frank was talking. And of course, of course you get these, I never wear mine. I didn't even take these out, but you know, this is, and I, this has some si significance in a few minutes. It'd this be great, is, though, uh, if it, it, it'd be great if they, if they actually put the, um, his 2020 goodbye in that box for you oh it's trust me we have more than a few of us made uh, that joke but this, these are the these are like our, our little things that you wear around a lot of our, people our, do our ranks um, in the kiss navy if you will yeah I, i'm a tombster admiral myself and the lovely and talented are both um 10 timers and these are the luggage tags and it's funny because we still have our our luggage tags on from like the first couple cruise on cruises on our luggage they're pretty these are durable they're good 
but uh, yeah. these are the the new ones. And that's all freebies. Again, yeah, this is just stuff well, that after I'm, paying thousands of dollars yes, to get yes. on. <laughs> well, I, well, I tell you what, though, I tell you what, though, they don't have to do any of this. No, no, you, I, I get you it. You two are it. such homers. <laughs> When you break just, when you break it down, I mean per night per for the concerts and this year with the free alcohol and all the gifts, it's it's not that crazy, you know. Really. Absolutely. Well, do you Absolutely. think it was it more enjoyable because there was less people on the boat? I mean, I hate to do my European and international friends like this, Amen. but god, god damn it was. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, here's so. the funny thing, and I keep telling people if you look at the sail away shot, it doesn't look like there's a thousand no. left people at yeah. all if, oh, there, you know, if you're missing 400 people even or five it can make a huge difference just in the movability on the ship well but, but Tommy, that when we took the go ahead and look i mean uh, you know uh look at the picture it doesn't look any different for the most oh i know it any. looked packed but it's, it's easy yeah. to, and, and as packed as the shot looks it's easy to find elbow room on those on those boat shows which is um, nice but if there was a major event going on or something big was going on, like an activity hosted by the band member or, or uh, one of the bigger bands playing, there was people at them for sure. There were, they, they, they drew a lot of people, but, but like, you know, like we were saying earlier, I mean, going to the bar, hanging out at the restaurants and all that, there was just in the elevators, there's just elbow room. How, and Mark, Mark did, did that help in getting your midnight bacon? Having oh, those like people? We were, we were the total midnight bacon stars every single night. So much so that the that the head chef brought it to our table. I even have pictures of it. Because the first night I went and I asked for midnight bacon, and they gave me a little bit of a problem. I'm like, oh no! I said, oh God. this. I swear to God. And uh, I said, go get your boss. And he's like, and the guy remembered us. He's like, oh no, you get get the hold on guys i need to switch my internet connection real quick here okay. amateur yeah let me see hopefully this doesn't hang up on us you have more than one internet connections well i'm switching from wi-fi to my wired connection i forgot to i don't forget. even know what that means that's something i know just just keep talking <laughs> bacon mark just keep talking bacon that's all you understand mark mark is more excited about meeting the bacon chef than he was gene simmons uh, you're pretty much right look how many times <laughs> you get the head of the boats you know culinary department bringing you bacon and it was good crisp bacon the only thing that would make this better is if somehow we could arrange like on the next cruise to have Gene or Paul come out in a white tux jacket and deliver bacon to you at midnight. Uh, I'll put that on the list for, for future requests. So. <laughs> I'm sure they'll get right to that. Yeah, exactly. They'll be like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm waking up to feed Mark. <laughs> yeah. I will tell, I tell you, I tell you what the, uh, and, and the, our friends that we go every year with, they're, they're foodies. They, I mean, they, they, you know, matter of fact, when, when we go places outside of the Kiss Cruise, we, we try to hit really nice restaurants and we all agreed really after the first night, we're like, you know what? They, Nor uh, Norwegian ramped up their food game. I mean, there was some damn good food on them. I mean, it's, it's usually, I gotta admit, you know, I've been on all 10. I don't ever remember the buffet not being, you know, at least acceptable, you know, but, they really ramped up their game. They had some very exotic foods and they had, I, I like, uh, I like Asian dishes a lot and, uh, man, they, they ramped up this great soup. Um, just, I couldn't get like every day I was like Jones and for it. I couldn't wait. So, um, like I said, the food was, was, was really, really good. And, uh, you know, like, like, like Frank said, you know, the, the lines weren't bad at all, you know, but getting back to midnight bacon. Yeah, we did it every night and we had a lot of fun and people were like, Hey, it's the midnight bacon, you know, people, uh, did you, did you, you, know, have, fan, did you have fans crashing the midnight bacon party? We, yes, we did. Uh, we did have people crashing the, the midnight bacon, wanting, uh, wanting a little bit of, wanting a piece of the uh, midnight bacon action, as they say <laughs> in radio land. Yeah. We got a piece of that, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was really nice, man. Um, and again, just that whole experience, the whole midnight bacon thing is always like, and as Frank will tell you too, <laughs> You know what was the toughest midnight bacon, Frank? And I'm sure you'll you'll know this. 
the night we had to go back two hours. Oh man, that really was bad. There, there, there was a couple that there was two downers about this cruise. Yes, yes. The two, the two hour difference going to Belize and then coming back really screwed us up. Cause I'm with the, you know, a lot, a lot of these people, myself included are in the bar party casino bar is where it's happening all night. So you're talking That's where three, we saw <laughs> yeah, three, four, five in the morning, we're in there hooting and hollering. And when they're like, when it's 2 AM and they're like, okay, when it's, or when it's 4 AM, it's actually 2 AM and the bar is going to close. Cause it's really 4 AM. And it's like, wait, 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 what, you know, we're, yeah, we're this... down their hours. And then you're, you're, you're like, just how do I continue drinking? That's all I want to know. No, I know. And then I had to get up and do the pick throwing the next day. And I woke up and my, and my phone was still on Belize time. And I went to go eat. I didn't even, I was two hours behind and I almost missed it. And I, I was like, well, I went down to, it's a good thing. I went down to the buffet because I went down there and I go, where the hell, where the hell's the breakfast? Where the hell's the eggs? Where the hell's the bacon? Oh, let me try that buffet on the back of the boat. Wow. What the, where, why is the, why is the lunch out? And I go, Hey, what time is it? They're like, it's, it's one. And I thought it was 11 and I had to be in the stardust at a quarter after one. And I just had woke up. So I, I almost missed a big throwing with Gene, which I was a participant in. Um, it was crazy. That and then when we went to Belize from Miami, that boat was like the damn Titanic. I mean, it was like it, I've been on tons of cruises in my life. OK, at least 10, 11. And I've never felt anything like that. It was insane for hours and hours and hours. A lot of people were sick. Yeah, matter of fact, here's a, here's a funny line that is, is accurate. There was a longer line for the Dramamine than there was for the merch, and they ran out of Dramamine. That's a true story. They ran out of it. Um, well, and I'd heard but, that that you were looking at 10, 12-foot swales. That's 100. I Liz videotaped it. I will tell you, both Liz and I and nobody in our immediate you know party of the people we hang out with got sick. So that was nice. I'll tell you what I did, and I highly recommend this to anybody. Also, I'm pretty blessed. I have a balcony, you know. I went out, because if you're, if Frank will tell you, that was in the middle of the night when we hit the, the roughest waves. And I just remember, like, getting almost thrown out of bed. I mean, that's how bad. And our door wall kept opening and closing, you know, slam, slam, slam. And all the hangers were going back and forth. Oh, back yeah. Forth. And anyways, I got up, and I went, and I sat on our deck. And I watched that thing rage. And I tell you what, it was pitch black outside. I'm looking over the railing and I'm watching, you know, I felt like Gary Sinise and, and uh, Forrest Gump, you know, <laughs> where, he, where he jumped off the boat in the middle of the storm. It was very cathartic. It was really, really cool. There was no thunder or lightning. I think just huge fucking waves. And they were just, it was just really cool because we were on the 11th floor we're you know i was in one of the top and the and the and the splash coming off the front of the boat was like the mist would go over like where my room was it was violent it was crazy but i gotta admit it was kind of fun too <laughs> at least for me i i really enjoyed that part of it you know because i got out of bed going and you're fucking you know trying to stand up and you know i made it out to the balcony and sat my fat ass in the chair and just watched the water rage and i gotta admit man it was cool yeah 35 mile an hour winds or something like that it was it was a bit much for and it, yeah. and it continued until the next day and yes. i think it ended around two in the afternoon yeah, yeah. because matter of fact they said because they pushed some shows back and i want to address something too that a couple of people talked about and and normally i don't share anything like this but um some people were complaining that during Bruce's set, um, Eric went and uh, he played domino and he played and then got off and left. He, he went really fast because a lot of people don't know this. Um, they had to move all the schedules around. And Brent told me that Brent Fitz. Yes. Told me that that's why Eric came played. And then, you know, he didn't go out and shake hands. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people, when they do those like guest spots, they'll, you know, walk in front of the stage, slap some hands, go play. You know, if they're a guitar player, they'll play that or the drummer will go back. They were on a really, really super tight schedule because I think they moved another show in after Bruce because of the high winds. Well, outside. didn't you say that Bruce had to cut a couple songs from his set? Um, well, he was under a bit. They... They literally told them that day that 
hey, you got to, you know, move your, your, you know, condense your set. I don't know if he cut songs, but I do know that they cut they out. Had, maybe they cut out all of the stage banter. That they yes, were gonna it do. was it was song, 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 song. I will tell you. Todd. Mark, Mark, oh. Mark, the <laughs> bass player, Mark. Hello, there am I go. gone? You, 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 gone? you, 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 you froze up for a bit. You're back now. Did I really? Well, it must yeah. be your router, Mike. Mine's oh yeah, fire. exactly. <laughs> that that that's I why the three of us, I, the three of us, were sitting here talking, and you were frozen. <laughs> I will tell you though, I I I know this thing's not charged very well, so a little habits. But anyways, uh, just a nudge, Brent's Brent, uh, uh, Bruce's band just fucking smokes. That that was so good, um, you know, and they they, they did a ton of stuff off Revenge. Um, just, I don't know, everything about it was awesome. And, and then opening up with Exciter, both, both sets, um, Naked which was, City. yeah, yeah. Just those, his shows were really, really great. Um, I loved, I loved those. So, well, let's, let's, let's talk a little bit about the, the Kiss set and the Bruce sets. I mean, you know, uh, Tommy and I touched on it real briefly last week. Um, Kiss pulled out a few deep cuts. I mean, real deep cuts. And in all and, fairness, we only knew the first set. We hadn't seen the second set at that time. We hadn't seen Bruce's second set, but I think we saw the second Kiss set. Oh, maybe recall. that's what it was. I don't. Yeah, I, I, I didn't, I didn't know that Bruce did two full shows. Yeah. Yes. And he did different sets yep. for each show. Uh, we, we talked about the first set, which was just mind blowing, but then he came back and did another one. That second set was like almost all of revenge. Yes. Yes. And, and it was in not the make theater. it on the ship. What's that? And the artists not make it on the ship. <laughs> well, I, I will say, and I don't know, maybe you two guys can contribute from being on the ship, but it is known Sebastian Bach didn't make it on the ship. Right. His band did. Sebastian Bach didn't. Right. Any? Do you guys hear anything about what was going on with that? How do you not make the ship if you're one of the, you know, featured performers? Let's just say I know what I'm not saying. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I mean, the, the 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 word on the boat was passport. Something with the passport. He was down in Miami. Something with the passport. Because I will say this: he was just playing in Orlando <laughs> last night. Yeah, you know, yeah, he's in Florida. He just played um, the last night or the night before. So we'll we'll leave it at that. Yeah, <laughs> because right. I, you know, I, look, that's all personal stuff, and sure, I, I don't care. But uh, but any anyway, back back to Bruce and Kiss's set. So yeah, I mean that second set Bruce did was almost the entire Revenge album. Yes, absolutely. Yep, and then you know. One thing that's funny is they don't get to coordinate with Kiss to see what they're playing. So a lot of times they end up playing a couple of the same songs. Um, you know, they, Bruce's band did Tears Are Falling, I think. Bruce's band did Making Love, which Kiss did the second set. So I know that they don't get to coordinate with Kiss and see what they're going to play. And, you know, so and I, it doesn't matter to me that those songs are played twice because I'd rather that than hear Cold Gin again. You know what I mean? This is the reason why I go on the boat. It's the number one reason that drives me to that boat um that being said I, I think that the kiss sets i mean look i thought they were going to phone it in for sure because they added all these shows after the west palm beach show that were makeup shows obviously fran passed away it's a terrible thing and they had a little bit of time to go home before the boat the last thing i thought that they were going to do was rehearse for this and pull out some songs but they i know they jammed on the boat and that's i, I don't mind that they jam on the boat nobody does but here they are again doing what they always do on this cruise and pulling out these songs that they've never played before and it's amazing to me because not a lot of bands do that not a lot of bands would take the time to do that and we appreciate the shit out of it even if it is a botched up version of she's so european we still love it um and and, and to hear to see take it off and you know, they, don't, they never played well, that makeup, to my knowledge no um, not me and, and it's uh, great to hear you say one. that well, it's great to hear you say that too, Frank, just because when I was on cruise eight, it was the same thing with Ace Fraley and people that weren't even on the cruise were ripping him 
for his performance of some of these songs. But to your point, I loved it. I was like grateful that I got to hear those songs. And I think as long as you guys are on the cruise and you felt like you got your money's worth and you were happy with it, no one that wasn't on the cruise has any right to say a word. Sure. Absolutely. Um, and, and, you know, I think that Bruce is, I, I, I mean, I'm not going to say the cruise gets stale, but I mean, when you've been on it every year, I think the first time Bruce was on, it was just mind blowing. And I think that in everybody, including Kiss knows that, that's going to be welcome every time. And I think now going forward, it would be a bummer if they weren't on the boat because they, they're, they're, they're playing all those 80 songs that kiss aren't going to, aren't going to play and any connection to the Kulik brothers, um, they'll, they'll rock them out and they'll do them well. So, and yeah, and, it, it, it's, it seems like with Bruce doing the full sets, he's, you know, basically doubling, tripling the deep cuts because Kiss couldn't do that many deep cuts. There's no way Kiss could do no. that many deep cuts. And we know Kiss isn't going to do all of those songs from the 80s anymore. So it's it's like it's it's actually perfect to have yeah. Bruce there with a band. And let's be honest, his band kicks butt. They sound great. I mean, it's, yes. I mean, there's there's some of those songs where it's like, is that Gene singing? Is that really? That's got to be Gene singing that. That, that guy song is incredible. Off that guy is just what the, I can't. I can't remember his name. Zach. 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 That's yep. I kept. Zach is a monster. He is. I mean, he is. that that and, and I tell you what I again is if you haven't been able to notice, I'm still on a high from this thing, and because Kiss was so awesome, you know, Bruce was so awesome. So many awesome things happened. It was just so much fun. Um, I, God, I cannot wait to get back. On. I want to get back on now. I want to do it all over. <laughs> well, again. let, let me let me ask e each of you guys of the Bruce set, the songs in Bruce's set, and of the deep cuts that Kiss pulled out. What was the one song that you each went? Whoa! I can't believe that. One for each set. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, right, yeah, one yeah, one yeah. one for Bruce, one for Kiss, and what you know? T questions to each of you guys. From Frank, Frank's our guest. I'll let Frank go first. Well, for me, you're always anticipating, and when I go on the boat, I I have such high hopes that I'm going to hear something I've never heard before, or something that hasn't been played in a long time. Um, and if I don't get it, which is a rarity, I, I you know I'm like ah, oh, I still got to see this. It was still amazing, right out of the gate when Bruce's band started playing Exciter, I, we're, we were a group of 16 this year and that's a small group for us. So I looked at my, my people and I was like, Whoa, that opening, you know what I mean? Right out of the gate, we, we heard that and we're like, Holy crap. And we knew he was going to knock it out of the park with the singing. Cause he talked, sing his ass off. And, and, and it just kept happening. It just kept happening with that set. I was like, Oh my God, radar for love. And, and all these songs, um, that for sure of, of, of Bruce's sets and um, she's so European for sure because I, I know Gene I heard Gene was doing that in Australia or something like that maybe with his band or whatever but I wasn't expecting to hear that and and I think that was the first one maybe that they started playing of the rare cuts for that show correct me if I'm wrong but um, that and I wasn't expecting any like I said before at all um, with everything that's gone on with them in the last month that was great I, I never thought I'd hear them play We Are One. I never thought uh, they'd be playing Take It Off and Make Up. So the fact that they did that, it was great. But for me, those two, she's so European when they started going into that, even though they botched the shit out of it, doesn't matter. It, to me, it's, it's just as good as to see Gene and Paul shaking their heads and laughing at each other during it. It's just as good as watching them play a perfect. Um, you know, that's the beauty of it. Like, like you spoke about when, when Ace was on the boat. Um, that Those two, I would say, for okay. me. Mark? Well, I, I'm going to go, I'm going to a hundred percent agree. Uh, Exciter, number one, I absolutely love that album. I love the Lick It Up album. Um, it caught me by surprise because I was expecting Bruce to start with Under the Gun or something, you know, from his era. And the fact that he did a, you know, a Vinny era tune first really like went, wow. And I'm like, you know, the gloves are off. He's coming out. To it, that, that's one thing that seemed cool about bruce's set this year is it wasn't just bruce era album tracks that he was playing 
He was yeah. doing stuff off of Lick It Up. He did stuff that Bob played on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he, you know, making love. I mean, he just, he expanded it. So it's almost like he was, he was, he was going even deeper into the deep cuts than you would expect from Bruce. Yeah, for sure. Yes, he can, certainly he can, he, yeah, he went through the catalog. And I got to admit, uh, from the first night, um, I thought We Are One was the song of the set just because Gene sang it so damn good. Um, he, I, I, I got to tell you what, and, and, and I'll get to this in a second because thank you, Frank. I was able to go to both shows. And um, that was the song that that hit me here the most just because a i didn't expect it you know i was funny because i could have found out ahead of time and i chose not to um and so i was i was surprised when they when i when they started it um and i thought gene sang his ass off now he's uh, frank's right she, he's so europe she's so european was a, just a train wreck and that that's up on youtube you can i, I think everything's up on youtube i haven't checked it out yet but um yeah, just, and, and there's a, and I'm going to come back to this, you know, they were fumbling it. Yeah. I'm happy. They played it. I'm happy. I got to see it. Um, but eh, I was happy. It wasn't in the second set. Um, yeah. We are one of that. Yeah. We are ones the complete opposite. We are one. I loved, I thought Gene nailed and it was just cool to hear it in that format with just the four musicians on stage, you know, because that song, and you know, really has some kind of studio work to it. You know, it's a little bit more beautiful, if you want. It was really raw. Gene sang it very emotionally. I thought it was really, really good. I, now, I really now I, 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 Tommy and I briefly talked about this last week. I love We Are One. I remember when Psycho Circus came out. To me, that was like the hidden gem on that album totally. that, that really that surprised the hell out of me of like showing gene's real deep influence of what was driving gene simmons as a musician i mean we are one is not a kiss like tune it's a more beatles it's more melodic it's you know but i loved it so when i saw they played it i'm like oh my god now i will admit watching the video i felt like it was one of the and maybe this is completely just the video and you were there and you tell me differently it felt like the the energy of the song didn't lend itself to a live performance experience. They played it and they sang it great, but it's, you know, you always hear bands go, well, we love that song, but we tried it live and it just didn't work. You know, it didn't My, have the energy. It didn't captivate the crowd. We didn't I, feel, I, was, it, was that it. anything like that with We Are One? I have a couple takes on that. I went to both shows as well. And I thought that the energy of the second show crowd was over the top compared to mm -hmm. first night. And I also think that everybody got on that boat and got completely hammered early on. And then maybe that's why night one people were dead or whatever. But, um, you know, the thing is, it's not one of those songs that's going to translate that uh, translate like that live. I don't think I, that and the, half the places in awe that they're playing it. You know what I mean? Also, I think a thing that contributes to that huge is you for better or for worse. There was tons of first timers on this cruise this year. There 600. Was like, yes, exactly. The most that I recall from any cruise 600. I feel that the majority of them aren't diehards like we are and they don't know that song or they, they want more of the hits. I've seen the comments on the kids cruisers, Facebook. Oh, they, I wish they would have played shout it out loud and all this. They're, yeah. they're, those people were on the boat. That's for sure. And they were plentiful this time. So maybe it was too deep cuts for them. Um, too much of deep cuts for them. I don't know. But, um, Frank, but I don't Frank, Frank nailed it. That was my comment. Did the energy drop Michael? You, that was a, a keen ob observation. It did. However, what Frank said is exactly how I felt. My mouth was dry. I was like, that one stopped me in my tracks. If you were going rock, you know, you wanted to rock. That one isn't one like that. No. That's a sit down and listen to it. Song. Yeah, that's that's an emotional song. Yes. And, it but that, and, and, and to your point, Mark, as a diehard Kiss fan, that would be the moment where I'd be like, oh, my God, I can't believe they are even doing this song. Jaw dropping, yeah. silent 
just uh, take it in because they'll probably never play this song live right. ever again. I just wish they would play it not during the show, but during the end of the road tour, like right after people are leaving. You know, they walk out. God gave rock and roll to you forever. But the We Are One is such a, I think it's such a well crafted song. And it's so sweet to me personally as a Kiss fan that it, it, it deserves a place in that whole thing. And oh, yeah. I mean, hurts. I mean, I, I would encourage all of our listeners go pull up We Are One, listen oh, to so it. Good. But also, more importantly, read the lyrics. Pay attention to the lyrics of, of the song We Are One, because that is a song that when I heard it, I was like, this is Gene Simmons writing a song to me. Sure. And I see my fan. face looking back at me. I exactly. You know, so it's a very personal song for Gene, but it should be a very personal song for all Kiss fans because it's written about you and your relationship to the band. And our feelings at that time too with the band when they just got peter and ace back in the band and put the makeup back on were high and to come with a song like that for us that's dedicated to us the kiss army the kiss fans it's huge and yeah. and, and another thing that about that song them playing it live was that was the last one that i would have thought that they were going to play live because psycho circus theme you know you were going to get something off that record probably Aside from Psycho Circus. Now, I would have guessed Within. I would have even guessed Tommy singing Into the Void. The last thing I was expecting was them to play that song. It was super cool that they did. Well, I, I would have thought, you know, Raise Your raise Glasses, your glass. yeah. Great Rally, Toast, something like that. Um, you know, even State I pledge a lead. Roll, yeah, they, yeah. They played that in, in Australia before. So the, the band has played that one before. I mean, again, it's We Are One is like a deep cut of the deep cuts. That's going will really you, deep, will, in my opinion. I will tell you as, as well, I was very happy that they played Take It Off both nights. That song just works live. And you know what's really great about that? Um, the harmony vocals, they can still nail. I remember because when, when, they, when they were playing at, I'm like, oh, my God, this is like watching them on the Revenge Tour. The only difference is, you know, Tommy sings. Um that that harmony they do in the middle the way you know it just it just totally fucking works and they nailed it um and that's another thing i think frank you noticed too that you know let's face it there's been a ton of crap about you know paul you know lip syncing and all this other shit they were on the boat paul was making going out of his way especially during black diamond you know doing uh, the three-part harmony or the actually four-part um doing the harmony parts um and singing and you know what um they especially the second set th that second set the second night was head and shoulders better than the first night i mean it wasn't even in the same fucking ballpark that second set was high energy tons of fun yeah and, and when when let me go rock and roll it was like I, the energy on them i thought the, the boat was gonna lift off i mean that that just kicked major ass that was yeah. fantastic well that's one of my favorite kiss songs let me go rock and roll and it was so cool to have them play that early on the second night because they didn't play it the first night Correct. but the boat was that the boat was definitely rocking and they threw making love in um that night too which they haven't played in a long time i'm pretty sure and uh that was great and um all the way was, yeah, yeah. Well, and, and you know, he's, I don't know if you remember, but when they came out on stage before they even hit a note, he said something like, just so you know, we're feeling real good tonight. So look out or something, something to that, maybe not those exact same words, but he addressed the crowd like that and was like, they were feeling really confident. You know, they must have jammed probably during the day or, and decided, you know, we're not going to do she's so European. Here's what we're going to do. And yeah, I, I'll, I'll, I was going to save this, this, this little story towards the end, but it, um, this was kind of cool. Um, I still have my, we got this in our room. Uh, my lovely and talented. Oh yeah. All right. That was awesome. Oh, hold on. You know what? I tell you what, I gotta, I gotta take this. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Oh, I am here. Let me, let me mute Mark. So we don't have to listen to his yeah. phone call. All right. Uh, just, yeah. Call. All right. Bye. Especially if he's ordering. Oh. 
No, I. All right, he's back. Like, he's back. Oh, any, anyways. Is that your um, Adam and Eve order? Yes, they still have that. And before um, before before we go any further, I just want to say to the listeners um, that haven't done a Kiss cruise because obviously they're they're there's they're probably not going to be around for too much longer doing these things. But um, to me, you know, we're obsessive as Kiss fans. My wife's like, "You're out of your goddamn mind. What's the matter with you?" You know what I mean. So while I've been sorry, I've been like this since I was six, long before you. Were, I knew you or you were born, but it's just how it is. Um, I thought that back in the day, pre, pre, and I know you guys speak highly of these. You guys, you guys always talk about these on the episodes, and I get excited when you do. Um, pre, pre ninety five conventions, the Kiss conventions where they showed up and played. When you had these awesome Kiss conventions that were put on by the fans, and I was at tons of them, all the early Detroit ones, Cleveland ones, Chicago. Um, you know this was prior to, to, to eBay and all that stuff. You can go and prior to all the Spencer gift stuff and all that. This was the greatest kiss thing you could go to. To me, it was like Disneyland. You would go to these things and they were massive and there was all this stuff and they'd have a member of the band there. And, and it was the greatest thing ever. Um, and they were so much fun. And, and to that whole environment was amazing. And at that point to me, that was the greatest experience you could have with kiss period. Um, now, to me, years later, the cruise has taken that place because it's 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 kiss overload. I mean, you, you you've got a channel in your in your room that only plays kiss concerts on TV. You know, you've got the whole catalog on shuffle throughout the, you know, throughout the, the speaker system, um, all wherever you go in the boat. The felt on the damn gambling tables is kiss. It's, it's just it's the ultimate thing for a kiss fan to do and not to sound like a commercial. Um I, I encourage everybody to get on one of these um, while they can, because it's, it's really the, one of the best experiences you can do for a kiss fan. I always say it's like you landed on planet kiss and yeah. it's kiss, kiss and all kiss. And it's phenomenal. And it's, it's the reason that I've been on all 10 and I'm, I, again, I want to go on 11 tomorrow. I mean, and I just so everybody believe. knows they did announce next year's kiss cruise is going out of Los Angeles. Yes, yes. But anyways, getting back to that little letter I showed you, um, they did something nice for the 10 timers um, this year. So we all got uh, what fucking I think it was the Spinnaker. I think it was Spinnaker Lounge. Um, we all got there and they checked. They were very tight about it. They checked your room key and, you know, make sure that uh, you, know, you were a 10 timer because it was printed on her keys matter of fact i think i have my key down here somewhere huh, anyways i can't find it um but so we go in there and it i thought they were going to do like an audio visual presentation and just thank you and you know have, and all have, have sudden, a free have a free drink and here's some hors d'oeuvres well yeah well they did <laughs> they had they had they had uh the kiss rum or whatever it was and they gave those away free and they had cupcakes and they had, you know, finger foods and everything. So we just went and sat down and I look up and who walks in is Danny. And I said to Liz, I'm like, if Danny's here, the band's here. Yep. So um, Danny walks in, takes a few steps, you know, gives me the, the Brooklyn nod. And I'm like, okay, I, this is going to be good. And uh, I didn't say anything because I didn't want anyone, you know, because it was on our side of the aisle and then they all walked in and uh you know they talked to us all and thanked everybody for being you know a 10 timer and you know appreciate the you know the business and all that stuff and you know uh then they did a impromptu q a which didn't go off so well and and i i don't know i'm just gonna assume the guy meant well but he just asked this really weird question and you know the fans were not happy about it and, you should and share, again I'm, share this Share the story because it's like people are going to be like, well, "What was the question?" Yeah. Well, I, I, look, I don't want to so talk about. Put, put it this way: I, I don't want to, because I'm just going to take it for, as that the guy was sincere. Did oh, I think I'm it was? Sure. A, yeah. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to come on here and like make fun of somebody because that's that's certainly. Well, I'm not, not asking you to. I'm not asking you to do that. But but when you say people were, you know, like. <laughs> You got to give us a little context is what I'm saying. All right. I will. I, and, and again, if, if, if the guy was sincere, okay. Um, if he was just busting balls, I, I think you kind of ruined the, 
the spirit of what we were doing. So anyways, the guy says to, to the band in general, he's like, I heard a rumor that on the last cruise, your makeup book was stolen. I know everyone in the, in the audience who just heard my, me say that is going, huh? Well, we all went, huh, too. Like, and Paul's like, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, I heard someone broke in and stole your makeup book out of one of your rooms. And Paul's like, like, we need to make a book to, you know, to do our makeup now. And the guy kept doubling down on his question and it ate up about, I don't know, four or five minutes. And like the, the natives were getting restless at that point. Like, what is this about? You know? So again, if, if you're watching the show or he's your buddy that I'm not mocking, I'm just saying that was weird, man. I it just, it just took the wind out of the sails is basically yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. Let's face it. You know what? You're, you're flipping through your adult magazine. Everything's great. And then, Boom, Roseanne naked. You're like, <laughs> oh my god, oh god. <laughs> what an analogy. Mark, 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 Mark has been sitting on that example for no, ten I, look, years. Oh, no, that just came to me. I was pretty. Oh, look, that, that's exactly what it was. You know, that's you're like, oh boy, dude, we're gonna get out of here now. I mean, I was like, I remember going, can this guy just? All right. Look, after Paul, like, kind of like basically said, you know, thanks, for whatever. He just kept doubling down on it. And I'm like, that, it was just weird. That's all. That, that that is an example of one of the biggest rules for interviewers. Never let the guest hold on to the microphone. Yes, you always that... hold the mic so you can always take it away if it goes south like this. If they have the microphone, good luck. Yeah. So any so anyway, so this was kind of cool. So the band was on my side of the room, you know, and I fist bump everybody, and you know, obviously E stops and I talk to E for a second. But as Paul was going by and he was fist bumping everybody, he fist bumped me, kept walking a couple steps, and then walked back to me, which I thought was cool. He's like, So what'd you think of the set? Wasn't the second set better? And I swear to God, on my parents' honor, I was telling everybody and anybody who would listen because the second set was the night before how much better because people some people were bitching that they didn't play she's so european this the, the second night i'm like fortunately got to see it it was terrible i mean look is it cool they played it i mean yeah but that second set was head and shoulders better than the first set. so much more energy they were way and they'd tell you they were way into it and it's funny i said to paul i said paul you're absolutely right that second set was way better and i said i'm very thankful that you switched it up and he goes yeah i thought you know he basically was just kind of saying yeah you know i thought it was a whole lot better too i just thought it was cool to him to come over and ask me that um you know to give me the time of day on it and i thought it was cool we talked about that for for a minute or so and and then they had to go because they had the the regular cruise ship q a so anyways as we're about to leave they say to to everybody they're like hey and nobody in the room knew this they're like, we put all your names, all, I think it was 160 or so first or 10 timers. They're like, we put all your names in a barrel and we're going to give away this varsity jacket. If you've seen those Kiss varsity jackets, they're super sweet. Got all the patches up the arms and everything. Kiss Navy on the back. And they pull the name and Elizabeth Cicchini gets pulled. Oh, Wow. Yeah, so uh, yeah, it was really super sweet. Out of so all she those gave people. she gave it to you, or is she gonna sell it on oh, eBay? She, she she wore it out of the airport because she, she oh, likes nice. it. I'm like, I told her, I'm like, you can seriously, and she's like, it's gonna be hanging up. I said, you, it's yours. You want it? She really likes it. It is. It's it is. If anybody's seen one of the varsity jackets, it's super fucking. She cool. needs to put it on and eat like spaghetti and no, no, to watch no. you go ballistic. <laughs> So, so that was, that was really cool. That little private event. And I really appreciate that six man did that for us. Um, Cause I mean, look, you know what? I think it's no different than if you, you know, the, the if you go to McDonald's and you collect this 10 stickers, you know, and you get a free pop or something, I, that's just good for business. And look, we, I can't wait to go back on, on kiss cruise 11, which is by the way, pulling, I think you mentioned pulling out of Los Angeles next year. Yep. So I also want to show this is a very unique 
piece of kiss merch that my buddy Bob gave to me. He did, uh, they were doing yoga this year and, uh, they gave the, you couldn't buy these. These Did you do yoga, Mark? No, but I want to. (laughs) I do. I can't can't imagine Mark doing yoga. Why? I don't know. I play play hockey. I'm, I do. I'm not a couch potato guy. I stay really active. Um, put it, put up, put on your yoga tights. Well, I'm, I just do it in sweats. Trust me. I'm not going to be doing that, but <laughs> these are, this is kind of cool. They, they did the, you know, these yoga towels or whatever. So you got the, but at the bottom, look at that. Kiss nice. Bruce 10. Pretty. Yeah. So I just thought that was kind of cool. He did the yoga thing and then he gave me the towel. So I thought that was, that are was you fun. sure I, those are yoga towels and not towels for something else, Mark? Well, this may be a tone for something else. If uh, no, it won't be because it's... <laughs> after after seeing that, I have one question: Is there a purple one, a red one, and a blue one also? Oh, don't! <laughs> don't, 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 don't <laughs> crazy. Um, you know, and and as Frank was alluding to earlier, this was this is super cool. Yeah, I mean that's so. So cool. I heard there were two different. So what is it? There are two different that? vinyl. I'm albums. actually hold on. I'm going to actually open it. Well, because it's in the Japanese sleeve. It's not like he's it's not like he's ripping off shrimp wrap off. Yeah, come on. Uh, You you know what? Fine. I'm putting it back. Nope. Nope. Staying right here. You guys want go on eBay if you want to see one. Frank, do you have one? He's not gonna open it. You're you're not gonna believe what I did. So all the gifts they gave us, I left in the room and got off the boat. You're kidding. Oh, Fortunately, I have tons of people that work for Six Man, and they're sending it all back to me. But it's not mine. It's, uh, I think the guy that was working in the room probably took it or snagged it or whatever. But um, yeah, yeah. I, so, and I, I ended up with the gold record somehow. I think I'm not sure because I heard the ten timers were only supposed to get gold. Well, that that's what I was asking. I heard there were two different records: one for everybody else, and one for just the ten timers. Hold on, I'm going to open it so so Tommy doesn't cry. So, I don't care one way or another. You were about to cry. Don't worry. <laughs> <So. laughs> God, this, this sounds like being on a playground. <laughs> you ought to be in a hotel room with him. <laughs> oh, no, no, please. I don't want. Uh, nope. Nope. You two in a hotel room. That's all for you guys alone. Ooh, that is a cool gold album. Yeah, the autographs are etched into it, right? Uh, they are. Yeah, that's very and then, nice. Uh, the back, which is that without the yeah. So what? What are the songs that are on there? Well, I don't play, think... of course, it just plays, plays "Kiss Alive" over and over and over because it's the greatest album of all time. There's not <laughs> one song from Crazy Nights on here for a reason. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Easy. <laughs> <laughs> Them's fighting words. <laughs> Um, so all, all, all kidding aside, I thought this was, and I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to l- probably get this thing. I'm thinking of ways. I'm going to take it to like a professional because I think this has to be displayed. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, that's like, a beautiful looking gold album. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not the just way a they, flat matte gold. It's but a the way they shiny. I don't know how to do it without covering up Gene or something because I think it would look better like that. You know. Well, I so think, I I think you actually are better to put a little bit of the um, cover, the jacket over the album itself a little bit. Well, what I, all kidding aside, what I'm thinking about doing, let me see if it's here. Oh, there it is. Um, I'm thinking about using my room key as like the bottom part, like where you'd on a plaque. Yeah. You see where it says it says uh, ten time alumni. Mm-hmm. This is also your your you know as Frank, but not everybody's been on the cruise that watches this. This also is your your key to to your room, and it's also your ticket to uh, to go to the concert so, and uh, everything else. So yeah, and to charge your life away with yeah. <laughs> Although this was a record for me. Uh, no pun intended for I, I I've never spent this less this little amount on a kiss cruise in my life. I couldn't believe how cheap it was um, because you didn't have to buy 
um, alcohol. Right. And I charged my merch ahead of time yep. for the most part. So the, I didn't spend much money. I bought a couple of the, the other band CDs. Um, there's some great music on board. Just well, I, I was going to say, I was going to say, yeah. can we, can we talk about some of the other bands? Tell us wh who you saw and who you were impressed by. Oh, yeah, I'm having a brain fart right now. The if, night, if Frank, how are the Night Rangers? Frank? I didn't watch a lot of the other bands, to be honest with you. I usually just go for kiss. And to be honest with you, I like those bands, but I just, you know, I, there's people that I go on this boat with that I only see once a year. I spend a lot of time with them, but uh, it was, the lineup was special to me though. Like I said, the last time I was on, the first time I saw kiss was in 84 with Queensryche. The next time I saw kiss was in 85 with black and blue. So that was super cool. With those bands that were Both on there. Those bands were on this this cruise yes and then tommy got up and jammed with black and blue and, and the lineup was great it's a, it's a shame that sebastian didn't make it on the boat but as i'm sure a lot of people heard they they put together an all-star jam and you know those guys uh turned a bad situation into an awesome situation yeah turning uh what do they say uh <laughs> chicken shit to uh, chicken salad as they say so um a couple things here and then i gotta go um that phone call, I got a contractor coming to the house. I got some work being you done. You can just tell us it's dinner, Mark. We know. No, it's not. I wish it was dinner. Liz isn't even home yet. So maybe um, the contractor's bringing lunch, dinner. No, I've been waiting for my hot tub to get fixed, and he's fixing it tonight. So I was having some pump issues. So <laughs> you're always having oh, pump Mark, issues. Mark, <laughs> Mark, you just opened up a world of comments from Tommy. <laughs> 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 Look, I don't care because I can't wait. A hot tub without fucking bubbles and the jets. You, you can make you make your own bubbles. Yeah, make your own bubbles, Mark. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Trust me, Liz knows I do enough of that. So um, <laughs> but but the the how do you how do I say this tactfully? Don't be tactful. But no, no, it's honest. I, I'm I think Night Ranger's really good at what they do. I'm just not a Night Ranger fan. Um, meaning when they're, I, I watch because they were on, yeah, they were. I saw, I watched them on the cruise last time they were on the cruise. I didn't catch any one of their sets because I was watching some of the other bands and doing some other things. But they're, dude, they're awesome and they're great at what they do. Queensrÿche, same thing. I'm just not a Queensrÿche fan. Um, neither of those bands are like in my wheelhouse. I would much have preferred somebody like Buck Cherry or Rad. I would have like that way more way more i'm more of a hard rock sort of um guy so i would have liked that more um but i mean look both bands did very well both bands went over very well the friends in my little circle saw both those bands and absolutely raved about them so you know i get it you know they but that's just not for me that's all um i'm trying to think of the guitar guy i saw he was i can't, can't remember his name but boy he killed us I, he had a, like a really great Pat uh, Pat Travers type vibe to him. He he was really I bought his CD. I really like it. Oh okay. um, no no no! I love Brad Gillis, but I, again, look, Night Ranger does not blow. I'm not saying it just no, that's, they, they still put on a great show. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and the fact I just they, I love them. Yeah, and they've got what well, it's Casey and. Uh, jack and, and uh brad still in the band correct right mm -hmm. yeah so they're still they're still you can still rock in america apparently yeah you oh, yeah you nice. can. <laughs> nice and, and and abroad but and um, abroad. I, I i i i you know what it's a lot it's been a lot of 80s a lot of 80s bands on the kiss cruises and people want that you know they wanted rat this year and and queens and black and blue and there's been lita ford and all this I, i'm more of a 70s rock guy uh, maybe because more of the 80s guys are alive still i, I don't know but like mm -hmm. i really enjoyed when cheap trick played i really me too it. that was great when pat travers i was at all those shows i love that um, oh yeah awesome especially in the spinnaker sure when I joined them that was phenomenal yes whitford st holmes was awesome oh that was and awesome that, you know and then st holmes came the next year i think on his own um, mm -hmm. I'm always pushing for your blue oyster Colts, your ted nugents your bands like that to be on the boat um but hey, as long as Kiss is on it and now Bruce every year, that's fine by me. And you know what? If they throw some other big names on there to make everybody happy, it's a win-win. Yep. Did Amen. did did they okay. before you got a run, Mark? In did you hear anything from the band during their Q and A? Anything new? Anything interesting that they talked about? 
No, they kept it pretty lighthearted, you know, it, you know, look, I, I really think that, and this is just my opinion. I think kiss right now, there's a lot of drama going on behind the scenes. Um, and that's public knowledge. Um, so I'm not stepping on any toes saying that. Um, but I think, you know, the ship is going to be fine um, eventually. And I mean, the kiss ship, not necessarily, you know, when I'm talking about the cruise. Um, next year is a busy year for them. Um, they're going to be overseas, most of it, assuming all those dates stand. You know, they're going to be all around the world. They're really not going to be back in the States till end of summer next year. Um, so we'll see what happens from there. But, well, uh, you know, they, they, Doc did his Q&A before Kiss did his. So he kind of was letting everybody know that, you know, Vegas isn't totally out the window. It's just moved till summer probably. And I'm guessing. I, I heard August is what I heard. Yeah. So, and you know, they blew out the West Palm show, which sucks because we went to West Palm and, uh, you know, we had to go home from West Palm because they didn't play. And then we thought we were getting that show after the cruise and then it went away again. So I think that it's all going to happen when they're in the States again, they'll make up those shows, Dayton or whichever, whatever ones they haven't done while they're touring the States. It was probably going to be a tall order to get all that gear. Cause obviously they're not playing with all that production on the boat to do the one off in West Palm after the cruise. And then Paul's father just passed, which was sad news we heard. So there's a, and like you said, there's drama too, probably going on as well. And, and there's a lot going on there. So I think that that being said, all the information that they would have given in the Q and a, we kind of already, you know, we kind of already yeah, had that vibe out there. Look, you, just within the last month, you know, between Fran, between the Rolling Stone thing, Paul's father, you know, uh, you know, the, the, the residency just look, man, again, woo, you know, yeah. it's just the I'm, way life I'm, is. I'm, I'm guessing they just want to kind of finish this year quietly. Yep. Yeah. Hey, yeah. My, my, so. uh, my feed is about ready here to cut. I'm at 5% on my thing. So I'm going to run. I got a contractor going to be here. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll wrap up so, with Frank uh, and you go eat dinner. Rapper. And, and I want to say, Frank, you so great seeing you on the ship. You're an awesome guy and uh, looking forward to seeing you next year. And if you're uh, come through Detroit, you uh, know how to get a hold of me. So yeah, for sure. And um, we were just through there not long ago. And uh, I think we spoke about how they're changing the name back to Pine Knob, right? Yes. Yes. That's what I'm hearing anyway. But uh, I, did I, see, I, I saw you at one of the Florida shows prior to the cruise. You right? did. Yeah. 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 Right. I was at Tampa and I was at uh, I was at West Palm Beach, too. Yeah, you were. That's what I thought. Yeah, that was yeah. A, that was a bummer, huh? I, oh, you know what? <laughs> I had a ball that night, though. Oh, yeah, it was fun. You probably didn't have to drive three hours in the rain after the show like I did. I did not. I had to drive <laughs> 10 minutes. I was and, with not Tommy. See, and not see Kiss. Uh, yeah. but, uh, well, we we were lucky. Tommy and I we went to sound check, so we did get to see him play that day. Yeah, we. Yeah, I saw you there. Yep, I that's right. That's right. Yeah. So I mean, you know, and and again, we we all we did was laugh the whole time. So I mean, that was that was a good time. Anyways, uh, peace, everybody. I got to run. Right. Later, Mark. All right, later. Bye, Mark. All right. Um. Uh. What's his name's coming to <laughs> fix the pump? <laughs> like now i gotta i gotta go upstairs and <laughs> oh i was just gonna let that run man who knows, what, who knows bonus what, footage what, what, yeah, yeah exactly you guys charge for that right yeah exactly you know who knows what we would have gotten on that hot mic moment there oh yeah, man no <laughs> that would have been great jesus and you knew if it was going to happen to anybody it would be with mark so <laughs> right um so i mean frank it, it basically sounds like you know, for everything that has been happening around the KISS world and COVID and cruises, this cruise came off really well. It did. And you know what? I, I, I speak for myself. I speak for everybody on that boat. I speak for anybody that pays attention to KISS that wasn't on that boat. We were expecting to pull the plug on it. And if we weren't expecting to pull the plug on it and they did pull the plug on it, we weren't going to be surprised because everything else around it got the, you know, got the, you know, so um but yeah i'm surprised they didn't i really am it's great yeah. that they had more than enough reasons to pull the plug if they wanted to sure mm -hmm. especially after that lifeline to the international travelers because you know i didn't book until late because i i was like oh you know what i'm off the road let me go i'm just gonna go hell with it 
and my sister came down and, and she went with me. It was my 50th birthday right before that. So we had a good time, but I, you know, I I'm thinking the whole time that this isn't going to happen because once they cut that lifeline and international, uh, you know, when you, when I was looking at cabins, there was some cabins left, but then yeah. like right before the cruise and they, and that was the final straw that whatever the circumstances were that the international people weren't going to come and you went and looked at the pricing and availability. It was like, boom, these amount, the amount of cabins that opened up was insane. I was like, and this boat's still going to go out. And then we're patiently watching the Jericho cruise go out because they were the guinea pigs. And the day that came back, the Coheed and Cambria cruise went out because they were the next up. And the day that came back, we were going out. So the uh, funny thing was, uh, we, we just finished that last tour this summer in the States with uh, Megadeth. And a couple of my road crew guys, uh, I asked them, I said, we're not, we're not doing anything till spring next year. I said, what are you guys doing? You guys got work? They're like, no. And they're, they're both maniacal about KISS um i said i think six man needs some people and uh you know how would you feel about trying to get link up with them and being on the kiss well, well they they got hired they oh, were hosting the, they, were, they were hosting the karaoke every night and um it was wild because you know they were on those other cruises that went out before kiss so i was corresponding with them the whole time what happened is anybody sick on the boat what was boarding the boat like all these things i was trying to get all this intel on and uh Six, like you know, like Mark says, six man Norwegian, everything went off without a hitch, and uh, yeah, it took a little bit more time to board this year with the COVID testing, but so be it. You know, we all went on the boat, we all had a great time, and I'm just happy and thankful that I was able to go again this year, and that uh, you know they made it happen. That's great. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm glad it happened for everybody who was there, but you know, like you, I was just like, there's just is this is going to get plug pulled on it. It's, you know, because of COVID and, you know, the passing of Fran and the Rolling Stone article, it was just like, it felt like everything was piling up yeah, on this cruise. Against them. Against them. Yeah, exactly. I just wonder at what point, because as it kept getting closer and closer, obviously the people that were booked on it, myself and, and, and all the other cruisers, we're feeling more confident that it was going to happen. Obviously the closer we got to sailing day. Um, I just wonder if there was any point it was, and, 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 you know, in their world that there was talks about being, you know, canceled or at what, or for it got to a certain point, it's like, how with it, we're going to do it. Well, yeah. What, what was the, you know, this is the, this is the cutoff date. You know, exactly. if, we, if we don't cancel by now, we've got to go. Right. And it kind but, of those discussions were had. Uh, oh, I'm sure they were had. I mean, they had to have been ha d discussed behind the scenes. And, you know, and it, and it was the day you guys were boarding that the Rolling Stone article dropped, which yeah, yeah. was just like, man, if that, you know, and, and I don't, this is pure speculation, but maybe if that had dropped a week earlier, that could have changed everything. Sure. But the fact that it dropped the day you were boarding, hey, you're boarding. So what if the article came out? You know, we can't right. cancel them now. Well, well we'll I, see I mean, what happens. You know, well, the protocols with these cruise ships down here, they're all different. You know what I mean? I feel like one of the things that everybody had working for them and Kiss probably agreed was everything that Six Man and Norwegian were doing for this boat. The negative COVID test of, you know, 72 hours before getting on the boat, showing proof of vaccination at the port, everybody taking the COVID test when they get there. Some of these other cruise lines aren't doing that. Some of these other cruise lines are letting people go out without vaccination. But they're, when you get on the cruise ship, there's parts of the boat that they're not allowed to go to. There's activities they got to go to. Some people are wearing masks. Some people aren't. To me, that sounds like a clusterfuck. That sounds yeah. impossible to organize. It sounds like a complete shit show. And I'm glad that wasn't how it went down on this boat. And I just think that the policies that were put, you know, forward for this ship to happen, I think that that helped the cause of this thing going out and those other two cruises that went out prior. Frank, Frank on, the let same, me... on the same boat. It was on the same yeah. boat. Let, let, let me ask you, Frank, on, on the, 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 the port of calls where you could get off and go into town or do something like that, did they have anything in place for, okay, now you're coming back? Do you have to get tested again immediately if you were hanging out in some local town or, you know, and, uh, or, or did they require you to stay within a certain area if you got off the ship? I mean, anything different there? 
Well, those were the one times they wanted the masks on. Us getting on and off the boat, we had to have to have the masks on, even outside and all that stuff. Um, there was no protocols. I mean, when we went to Belize, it was the cruise ship's private island. So there was nowhere else to go other than there. We docked okay. the that private island, and that was that, which is cool because that makes – it's a, it's you know, safe. People aren't going off control. and getting COVID yep. and coming back. You know what I mean? So, um, right. But when we got to um, Honduras um, the next day, um, my sister and I went and did a dolphin excursion. We had to take like a charter boat and go a half hour away. And um, we had, they're real strict with the masks in Honduras, big time. They must have got crushed there with it. And, you know, it was a big deal that we had the masks on everywhere we went there with the local people. Okay. But um, there was no COVID testing or anything like that when we got back. And, the and, and, and then once the cruise was, once you were on the ship and the cruise was happening, there was no more tests during the cruise. Well, funny you should say that. Um, so I qualified for the pick throwing with Gene, which is normally all the other events on the boat you sign up for and hope you get a drawing. With the Gene pick throwing, you go and qualify. So the first day you qualify and the last day was the pick throwing. I qualified. I made top five. And then I got a note, a letter on my door. Congratulations. You're doing the pick toss with Gene, whatever. At 10 o'clock in the morning, make sure you show up in the, one of the restaurants was designated for COVID testing. And I had to go in the morning and get the COVID test and able to participate in the thing with him that day. Is that because so you any, were going to be on, you were going to be on stage with him exactly. then? Exactly. And he, okay. had, and he had the masks on when we were up there as well. So I think anybody was participating in any of the activities with band members and things like that, that they do on the boat, they had to go get COVID tests during the day, you know, get the quick, you know, jab up the nose and, and um, you know, if the results came back, you know, positive, then obviously they weren't, they were going to not be able to do that, um, that activity with the band members. So there was, there was that. And I'm sure that that station was probably used for other people that were maybe feeling sick or, or crew members that probably had to get tested every day or whatever their, um, you know, whatever their uh, protocols were. What was Honduras oh. like? Go ahead. What was Honduras like? Frank? Honduras was very third world um, out of compared to a lot of these islands that we go to. Um, we had to drive through everything to get to where we were going to this do this dolphin excursion uh something key anthony's key i think it was called um but you drove through this just dogs on the street and poor people and uh you know you see buildings there's you know the the, the guy driving was kind of the tour guide there's our hospital you couldn't believe that that was the hospital you couldn't believe that this was a school um they only i think that they only at up until recently were able to get up to sixth grade education there and things like that. It was really, um, and, and, you know, in my travels all over the world, I, I end up in some of these places sometimes, you know what I mean? And uh, it just makes you appreciate what we have here. And, um, you know, you feel for those people there and, uh, you know, it, everywhere's not paradise when, when you, when you go on these cruises either. I mean, when you go to Jamaica and Grand Cayman and Bahamas and all these places, it's, you know, the, the, this bright blue water that you see in the pictures and all that, you know, there's, it's usually poor people on, on an Island and, that, and that's how it is. But I, to me, out of all these places we've done with these cruises, I thought under it was, it was a little more gnarly than most of the other ones that we've been to. Interesting. And I didn't know what to expect Belize and Honduras because those are ones that I, we've never been to. Well, yeah, no, I thought that was a very attractive reason to go was to see those two places. Absolutely. I don't know. Belize you could vacation at, but I don't know if too many people that go, oh, I'm going to Honduras. Exactly. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. And Belize, I wish we could have saw more of. You see that picture of the big blue hole and all that stuff. But um, yeah, that wasn't where we were. We were just on the cruise ships, that private island. Now, I will say this about the private island in Belize compared to their private islands down in the Bahamas and stuff. This island was massive and had zip lining and had a, a ginormous pool on the island with the swim up bar and all this stuff. So it was, oh, wow. it, was it, it was it was like the one that they take us to in the Bahamas times 10. But um, again, it would have been nice to see more of Belize other than just that. So, yeah. Well, that's the one downside of the cruises is you have such a limited amount of time in those locations. Yeah, and that's why we try to get off the boat and do something every time we go anyway. I know a lot of people like to stay on the boat because it's less crowded with people and enjoy the pool on the boat and all that stuff for today. But to me, that'd be crazy to not get off the boat and go see something. I, I would want to see the world too. Why not? You're there, you know? Absolutely. Well, Frank, before we wrap up here, 
what you know what do you got ahead of you with with hate breed i mean i know your tour with megadeth is over yep um what's what's the future holding for you guys i mean we're talking about recording again um which is strange because we're good for a record every three or four years you know the band's been around 27 years we have eight records out and do the math um you know but it was just weird putting out a record during COVID and um, not being able to support it, you know, and we're a band that will go all over the world. And the reason it's three or four years in between records is it takes us that long to go to South America, to Australia, to Japan, tour the States four times, tour Canada four times, tour Europe four times. Um, But with us not being able to do that, why not go and get creative again and do some more recording? And we've even entertained um, doing re-recordings of some old records. So, um, touring wise we're we're holding out to see what's going to go on um in the spring with some rescheduled stuff but for the most part i'm home and uh, i'm like dorothy man there's no place like home but um i just am happy to be able to go on the kiss cruise happy to be be able to go on some of those end of the road shows happy to be back on the podcast with you guys i love the show love thanks again for having me on oh of course and, um, I, i'm well, glad you to know let, let, let me ask you i mean you're you're a touring musician yep that Rolling Stone article was all about a touring band, Kiss. What What's your personal take? When you read that, what did you think? Based on what you've seen, what you know, what you're hearing, what, what, what do you feel about that? I just feel that without throwing people under the bus or making people mad, it's the last thing I want to do. I know a lot of people are right. for Kiss World, but we are very divided world right now and we're very divided on politics we're very divided on vaccination some people are going to get mad about some things and some people aren't going to get mad about things who um people swear that you should get vaccinated people swear you shouldn't get vaccinated i think that at the end of the day it has a lot to do with that but when somebody passes away um there's going to be questions asked especially when there there was there was um you know rules um put into place so um it's not surprising to me that this is going on it's a shame that it's going on um i think it's bad all the way around that that it's you know, obviously the death of fran's bad enough but it's a shame that it's going down like this um but you know i'll say this and and i hope i'm not you know throwing gasoline on the fire you know there, there was there was more people backstage at those kiss shows than than there was at ours you know um and and you know, ours was strict. It was so strict. And, and I tell you what, it's the reason why the tour went the distance. We weren't allowed yeah. to have any guests backstage at all. The only people that were allowed to be backstage on our tour were, were family members. And they had to show up with a negative COVID test. That's it. Right. We can have guests come to the show. We can get them tickets mm-hmm. to the show. But we weren't even allowed to go out in the crowd to see them. Um, we had masks on outside all day. These were amphitheater tours. These are the same sheds that they were playing. Um, I just was a little bit surprised that there was people that allowed to be backstage at those kids shows. Um, and, and, and that there wasn't at ours, especially, you know, with those guys just have been being sick and all that stuff with Gene and Paul being sick. So, um, do you, do you, do, were, were, were you a bit shocked? Cause I know I was shocked when I read the statement where, where basically kiss said they learned that a couple people, workers as i think they referred to them but workers slash crew members faked vaccinations i mean that that seems pretty jaw-dropping i mean you're you're a musician you're trusting those people that work around you to to be following protocol to to be following protocol to, to, to keep you safe i think that that this goes on at all levels i think this goes on at small jobs this is going on in the NFL with Aaron Rodgers. If uh, I, yep, mm-hmm. yep, exactly. Yeah, that's a great point. This, this is this is this is something where people are put in a position where if they don't want to get vaccinated and they don't want to lose their job, they're making some kind of decision. Now, fake vaccination cards, it's not like you're making a driver's license with holograms and shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a yeah, it ain't hard. hard. It ain't hard. So I would imagine there's a lot of that out there. There is. And you know what? What can I do? What can you do? What can Kiss do to stop somebody from going and doing that? You know what Nothing. I mean? We can't. Nothing. Well, no, no, you, you, you can't. You can't do anything. But I guess it's you are trusting. And again, I'm doing the, and, and I'm saying this you as a band member, and this could be any band. 
as a band member who has to hire a crew to be in very close proximity to you for potentially months or years, you're putting a lot of trust that they're not going to do something, especially right now, that could potentially injure you or, as we saw with Fran, kill you. I know. I know it's a shame. And uh, that, you that know. to me, to me, that's the shocking part is like, oh, you're, 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 the, this is, you know, in a lack of a better sense, this is your immediate family. This is your touring family. And you put a lot of trust that they're going to do what's best for everybody. Yeah. It's just, it's all strange. You know, it's, it's just shocking news to me, you know, with Fran, I saw him on Friday in West Palm. Yep. He was very short with me. It was very standoffish with me. And I thought it was very weird because I know him Saturday. I saw him. I said, hi, hey, I don't, you know what? You do your own thing, whatever. Hey, what's up, Fran? How you doing? Just want to say hi. Sunday. I went to Atlanta, saw him Saturday. He was gone. He was working on stage. I watched him working on stage Sunday in Atlanta and Saturday he was dead. So it's crazy um, because there's so much stuff that's uh, um, one thing I could, people could say whatever they want about the vaccination and all that COVID's real and it kills people and it's no joke. And it, and in certain, certain circumstances, people get it and they're gone quick. Um, yeah. You know, so um, I don't think it's anything to play around with um, because, you know, some people have underlying health conditions they don't they don't even know about. They don't even know about it. That's they don't it. even yeah. know about. It. And then what, what happens? It's too late and your life's over. I mean, it's crazy to me because in the beginning it, of this, it was. Have, do you know anybody that's died from COVID? No, no, no I know. I know. I, you, yeah. now, who, now, now, who doesn't know anybody? That's well, died that that's right. exact. That's, that's a great ex point. That's exactly it. A year ago, I might have known one person who got it, didn't die. Now I am so frustrated and tired of knowing too many people that have died from it. It's just I, you know, I don't want to hear of another person that. I worked with acquaintance with colleague with or friends with that's died. There's just too many people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what, that's, what's getting me in at this point. I'm just, I think I told Tommy this a couple weeks ago. It's just like, I'm tired. There's too many people dying. That's just it. There's too many people that are dying. Sure. Um, and you know, you can only police it so much. Um, it's sad. Yeah. And, 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 um, I just want to, I heard the news. I just couldn't believe that, that he was gone. And, um, you know, but, you know, things have come out now and, and make us think, you know, there was something going on there. And um, this isn't the only situation. There's probably thousands of situations um, all over the world that are similar to this that we don't know about. Well, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. But, I mean, um, I, 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 I've said, I mean, because I work in the music industry as well. It's like, you know, this is something that, we in the industry sort of have been hearing all along. It's not, ex it's not exactly what's being portrayed. There's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that people don't know about that, you know, could make you draw, drop your jaw going, really? That's how well they're doing it? Well, how, how bad it is? And for the people at home that don't know, I mean, Kiss is a ginormous road crew. It's almost 100 people out there. So you take those 100 people and you're, you're talking about bus drivers that go and sleep in hotels every night. You're talking about a catering company that comes in and does the food every day and things things like that. Um, the security then, then, I, then, then add all the local crew. And that's local what I mean. Staff. The local yeah. crews, everybody pushing gear, the people, the security and all that stuff. There is a lot of this going on all day. So. I mean, the way this shit spreads, I mean, someone's going to get sick. Um, hope, hopefully, yeah. you, hopefully, if you're not vaccinated, you got a good immune system. And if you are that, you know, you, it's, it becomes minimal. But that, I mean, because it's not going away and this is how we have to live our lives now. So you either go out and do those kind of things or, and live your life and, and, and try to protect yourself. I think that the best thing to do is protect yourself as much as possible. If that's, if that's getting a shot for you, so be it. If it's wearing a mask for you, whatever, it's either that or your other option is to hide in the house for the rest of your life, you yes. know, because it's this not like it's going away. It's not going away. Yeah. I agree. I totally agree. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I remember, you know, and you're in the same boat, 
you know, 2020, everybody's like, oh, okay, 2021 is going to be back. We'll be touring in 2021. I, I don't know if you saw it, but except just announced they're postponing their entire European 2022 tour to really? 2023. Oh, man. And that's I'm just like, good. you know, that's what I, I said to Tommy and Mark. I'm like, this is not a good sign. This is no, not a good now, 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 granted, their tour was kicking off in January. Sure. So, you know, that's pretty quick. But, no. you know, they were basically your... saying with all of the different COVID protocols and restrictions from country to country, it just makes it very impossible to tour Europe from one country to the next. So they're pushing it back a whole year. And I'm just like, we can't we and I say that as a as an industry, the music industry, the touring industry we can't push everything back yet a whole nother year just can't no no and then and, you know you saw what happened this year i mean it, it's like okay 2021 should be okay well i mean how many tours were canceled or postponed or oh, or yeah, had many I had, a, had an emergency guys fly out to fill in for somebody who had to stay behind for a week or whatever it is i mean it, it is scary with that tour being uh canceled like you said because you know we're we're almost into December and the way the year, this year's flying around, flying by, you know, your, your summer festival season's around the corner. Your book, your, your, your book right now, you're booking your festivals for next summer. They're, oh, yeah. they're already booked. That's probably. Oh yeah. I know. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, we're on a bunch already. So I, I would hate to see it go South because um, it's just, if we, if we would have went until October, it would have been two years for us of out of work really, because the money's on the road at this point, but um, yeah. You know, that 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 Megadeth thing fell into our lap because in flames from Sweden couldn't get into America. And, and so realistically, we were going to be out of work for two and a half years. I don't think people can continue to keep being out of work like this. Um, you know, I have some yeah. old folks on my street that I speak with and they don't really understand what it is I do. You know what I mean? They, they think I'm, you know, playing in some club down the street. But I, I explained them. I try to explain them. I said, we'll be the yeah. last ones back to work, you know, because. Yeah. And, and on top of that, you know, our stuff is moshing and people jumping on each other and all that. So that, yeah. makes, it even, that makes it even worse. Yeah, that's yeah. that's all close contact. You're not going to have a hate breach show with seats. It's just not going to happen. Right. They're so, not going to be socially. I mean, you can't have a socially distanced mosh pit. Mosh pit. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> I'd like, to, I'd like to see somebody try that, but it ain't going to work. Well, you know, we did do the amphitheaters with Megadeth and, you know, but that was, a, you know, and there were seats in there, but, you know, even with that, I mean, there wasn't like there was empty seats in between people. It was, they were packed. There was 10,000 yeah. people at a lot of these shows. So NBA arenas, all the seats were full. It wasn't like every fifth seat, there was somebody like that. So right. we didn't get any negative feedback from that. We didn't get anybody claiming it was a super spread or anything like that, but that's just one example. I'm not sure what, you know, and, and like you were saying in the different countries, in America, it's state to state. It's different, different laws and different ways they're going about handling uh, COVID and things like that. Matter of fact, that West Palm Beach show that uh, Mark and I were at, and you, you were at, and we 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 went down there, and I went to go give my name at the list and all that, and they were asking for a vaccination card, and I was like, "What? We're in yep. Florida? Are you kidding me? I couldn't believe that." And here yeah. I am. I didn't have it. It was back home, three hours away, and I had to have my wife send a picture of it and all that but um i mean something like that okay something like showing a, a negative covid test or proof of vaccination now come on who can't go get a photocopy of that or change a name on a sheet or something like that you never know so and then those people well, are going to be in the concert they're going to be close to each other it's just there's no way to stop this so and, and when kyle you know and when kyle got vaccinated my buddy at the that i do the auctions with mm -hmm. Just handed him a blank card and said, "Oh, you can just fill it out." See, that's insane to me. What the hell, yeah. I, and you, and you, be, and you better believe, as sad as it is, I hate to say it, but there's people out there making thousands of dollars off fake vaccination yep. cards too. So, oh yeah, and, and that that that's, and again, getting back to that's that's what bothers me, not legal or not, rights or not. It's a lot of people are putting trust in other people to do the right thing, to keep you safe, to keep you able to perform, to keep this business moving. And, and we all know it only takes one person to shut a whole tour down. I mean, we've it. seen it. 
we we've, we've 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 seen we've seen tours that have stopped because something happened shows get canceled because of one person and there's a lot of livelihoods that are impacted by that you know you can't you can't just sit here and go oh well it's a bunch of musicians they got plenty of money no big deal we've talked about this many times it's like the concession workers the merch stands the ticket takers the people in the parking lot the people who come in and clean up at the end of the night if there's no show they have no job it's true it's true and you know what the whole thing about that tour we did was um nobody wanted to be the guy nobody wanted to be the guy that sent the tour home and you know what i mean yep. nobody wanted to be the person that oh you went off to the bar after we played you know and we were done at seven o'clock every night with all night with nothing to do um and at the end of the tour i was like you know what we had an opportunity to go to opening night at the rolling stones like we talked about it's like let's just go the tour is almost fucking over and even at that we felt so guilty going and doing that because you don't want to be that person that brings the whole ship crashing down yeah you know? exactly um and that's the problem because that's all it takes is, is for somebody to slip up and to me i feel like it's that night and day that some people are just very careful when they leave the house and some people aren't some mm -hmm. people are touching all the fucking doorknobs and not washing their hands and not giving a shit. And some people are open, putting their shirt over the door handle and opening up the door. And then, and I'm that guy. I'm that guy. Yeah, me too. I was Am doing I that pre COVID. It's like you walk, yeah, into me a public, too. walk into a public restroom. I'm like, I don't, I don't care if the, no, I know that's, <laughs> I think there's going to, when there is finally light at the end of this tunnel, it's going to be people, there's going to be a lot less germs spread around in the future after all this shit said. Well, I, I've, I've always yeah. said that. I, go, I hope. If, if, I if, hope. If, if anything that came out of COVID is we learned how clean we weren't beforehand. It's like, right. wait a second. How often were the restaurants wiping the tables down beforehand? They never were. Now they right. are. There's nothing well, wrong with Frank's wiping down stuff and cleaning stuff. No. And, and, and it is. It's all about personal responsibility. But, you know, Michael and I have talked about this, too, on one of the past shows is how, you know, the bubble is only as good as the bubble is if everyone follows that. There's a moment you have a day off and half the crew goes to a Yankees game or whatever it is that's, you know, puts it more in jeopardy. And to your point, also, some are going to be more careful than others. It's true. It's, it's just true. human behavior. And you can only so. control yourself, but you got, and then these are, you know, these are the long emails that we got before that tour from live nation, from the, 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 you know, the, oh, the production managers and all that stuff. Hey, you know, be careful what you're doing. It's outside on days off. And, 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 you know, you, you have to, you have to, you know, you can't control everybody, but if everybody does a good job themselves, then, you know, it's a miracle that this thing went and, and, you know, we had a couple people, test positive and they were crew members fortunately and um they were able to get replaced no band members and you know just it, it's like it's like what we're talking about right here it's like it's it's how it's how how safe you are when you go out in the public i mean people are still wearing masks people aren't wearing masks people feel safe by being vaccinated and not wearing a mask out in public. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure you guys know that down here where I live is the wild, wild west. I'm, I'm yeah. and, and, and I'm not sure what, 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 you know, what the protocols are in your guys, your guys' states are, but um, you know, we're pretty lax down here, but even with that, I still, you know, I, and, and I'm vaxxed, you know, I'll say it. Um, yeah. I, I still wear the mask when I go into stores, you know, mm -hmm. because I don't want to get other people sick around here. And um, you know, I don't know who knows I, people get, COVID and die with, with, with the vaccine now. So yeah, well, well sure. yeah. yeah. I mean, it can all happen. And you know, my, my attitude is like, I got nothing against the mask, you know, even if it has nothing to do with COVID, Hey, maybe I won't get the flu this year. Maybe I'm not going to get the, the freaking common cold. I mean, it doesn't bother me. The it, only it, problem it, I have is, is I forget to bring it with me all the time. I got to it or to get it. I mean, my, my, yeah. I've, I've said this before. My biggest issue has been, and thankfully, it's going to get rectified in the next week. I've got a seven-year-old daughter. She couldn't get vaccinated. And we've got family in Florida. We're going to Florida for Christmas. So we were like, all right, we're going to go. But if she's not vaccinated by the time we get there, we're going to have to be very restrictive in the activities we can do. Thankfully, well, she's going to get her first shot next week and she'll okay. get her second shot early december so by the time we get there in christmas she'll be fully vaccinated because 
I, I, I told Tommy this. I'm like, I wouldn't even go to a Kiss show right now. I'm fully vaccinated and I'll wear a mask. But because she isn't, I couldn't chance even bringing something back sure. that would just give me the sniffles, but could give her in a full on infection. Right. I mean, it's it, you know, it's those things like that, that, you know, I, I haven't, I haven't mentioned this yet. I mean, her, her, her second grade class last week had four outbreaks in her class. Wow. Yeah. Now, they man, they managed it very tightly and cut it down and everything else, but we're still sitting here like, Good Lord. I mean, we're, we're literally just a week away from the shot. Can we not get COVID this, the last week? And sure. we, we busted our ass to protect people uh, to protect others. And it's just like, that's, you know, that to me, that's it. It's, it's, you're protecting yourself, but in this case, you're potentially protecting somebody else. I mean, again, sure. we'll, we'll, we'll probably never know what happened to Fran, but you know, did somebody not do the full protocol and somehow Fran got it from somebody else? I mean, I, I would hate to know that I infected somebody. No, hate I know. know and, that. and that's the problem. You never know. And they, they talk about tracing the stuff after somebody's got it. It's like, come on, really? I mean, it, it's impossible. It's impossible. And, um, you know, I, I'll never get over the fact that, you know, even right now we're sitting here talking, I'm seeing, looking at your guys' faces and that we're good, that we're good. We're alive during this. Like in a hundred years from now, they're going to be like, man, in 2019, they had this thing called coronavirus. Oh, yeah. your, your, like, your great grandpa had to do yeah, this. It's just it's like crazy. I know it, 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 it is so crazy. I mean, I still, I still have clear as day memories. You know, it was March 6th, 2020 one week before basically everything shut down, I went and saw kiss here in Oakland. Yeah. And, and I remember going up to will call to get my tickets. And the person at will call said, Oh, there's no path. They've, they've decided starting with this show. There's no passes, no meet and greets and no photos with the band because of COVID. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, Oh, wow. This is real all of a sudden. Yep. And then, you know, it was March 13th, I think, when oh, boom, yeah, yeah. everything just shut down overnight. Yeah. Yeah. I got back from a cruise actually in February, on Valentine's Day, and I was sick for a month. And I get bronchitis all the time. So I didn't know if it was that because I didn't even know what COVID that, that I didn't even know there was yeah. COVID or that was a thing yet. We were on that six man and practical jokers cruise actually. And uh, we come back and I was sicker than hell for a month. I don't know if yeah. that was what that was. Cause I usually, and that's another thing. I have a terrible immune system and I always get sick for a long time. I don't want to, even with the vaccine, I do not want any part of this shit. Well, when I came back from the kiss crusade, I had the crud for six weeks. I couldn't shake it. Yeah. Before COVID. I just like, so I get it. I want to avoid as much of that as I can. You know, I've been taking so many vitamins and um, I had a lot of problems with my two teeth lately and I've been on antibiotics. So because I was having uh, root canals and all this fun stuff before the, I went on the cruise, I'm, ho I'm thinking and hoping that also being on that boat, being on antibiotics and all my vitamins help me too. because to me. COVID was on that boat. COVID is on every goddamn cruise. You sure. take a you take a negative COVID test four days before you get on the boat. Then they all get on an airplane and fly down here, and they're going out in Miami the night before and staying in a hotel. And then if they get sick, then it's not going to show up on that test that you're taking when you're getting on the boat. So no. certainly, certainly, it's I mean, on we there. we 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 all know that cruises are just germ factories. Oh my god, pre COVID. I mean, this it's you know, it, it it was pre COVID and that 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 you know cruise ships were always walking around with hand sanitizer giving it to people and telling you to yeah. clean your hands so i mean yeah it, it's it's just what it is it's a close confined space recirculated air and everything else you're there for multiple days of course it's going to happen i mean I, I i remember when my daughter was born and and we brought her into daycare for the first time. She was, I don't know, six months, eight months old. And the daycare supervisor goes, well, I hope you guys are ready. You're going to have a runny nose for the next 18 years. And we're like, what do you mean? Oh, she's like, <laughs> she's like, it, it's a kid. They're going to constantly be runny noses, sneezing, coughs, everything else. It's just the way they are. Keep her out of the ball thing at 
Yeah. Yeah. And because you're the parent, guess what? You're going to have the same stuff for mm-hmm. as long as they are around. And I'm just like, and now after seven or eight years now, I'm like, yeah, that's pretty much true. I've had a freaking mm-hmm. runny nose for, and I, and, and when COVID first started and I remember I took a test and they were like, well, do you have a runny nose? And I'm like, well, yeah, but I've had a runny nose for eight years. <laughs> like it just hasn't stopped running. And they're like, what yeah. do you mean? I mean, I've got a, I've got a child. Oh, okay. We get it. We get it. <laughs> but you know, it's the world. Germs are everywhere. It's just, it's, unfo- it's unfortunate that, that this one can kill. And in a case of somebody like Fran so quickly, I mean, may, and that might be a very, very rare case. But I don't know. I'm not willing to roll the dice on my life or my child's life that it's going to be rare. No, no. And I'm just fortunate that I didn't get sick at all on this boat because this is the first Kiss Cruise I didn't get sick after the Kiss Cruise crowd. You talk about Kiss Cruise 8. That hit me halfway through the boat. And I was was in my bed for the last two and a half days of that cruise. Oh, and then got off and drove three hours home from Miami and was sick for like another three weeks. It was terrible. Uh I couldn't shake it. And I tell you what, I get the crud every single cruise I go on. I've never gone on a cruise and not got the crud. I haven't got it. I didn't get it this time. And I'm telling you, all these these vitamins I'm taking and the damn antibiotics, because I never thought about taking selenium and garlic and and b and d and zinc and magnesium i never took any of that shit but once covid started hitting i was taking all that shit elderberry you know what i mean so yeah yeah yeah, that, yeah. Might, that might help you know what i mean that, yeah. that antibiotics for my teeth i mean the silver lining to having a, my teeth hurt on the boat uh, i'm just you know happy that uh i didn't get any of the crud uh much less covid because like i said there's no way that covid's not on the boat People well, are no, going it's, right. it's, 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 it's everywhere. And all we are trying to get to is a point where we can, Man. we as a society and industries and businesses yep. manage it. Just, just like we've gotten, we had gotten to the point where, yeah, we manage the flu. The flu's always been here. It's been here every year. People die from the flu. Nobody's denying that, but we've figured out how to manage it and, and live with it. We just got to get to the point of being able to do that with COVID. No, I know. And yeah, this, yeah, this whole, this whole, um, you know, this whole high hopes last year of, of once we reach our immunity and that, that's going to go away. You know, that was just, a, that was just, it's not working. No, it's not going to no. work. I mean, it's here to stay. It's going to be here. So, and, and, and I just want, you know, and maybe maybe it's selfish, but I just want the music industry, the entertainment industry to be able to get back to full speed working. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's just we all know too many people in this this industry that are out of work, that have left because they couldn't get work. So they became a real estate agent or something else, that's, found that's... a new new career. I mean, it, it's just like I want. I want my bands to be able to go back to doing what we want bands to do. And the sad thing about that is there's people that are never going to go to shows again because of this. It's just how they, this is how they think, especially when I'm talking about house of blues is in places like this, that's just our general admission. It's not seats and you're up against each other and smashed in and all that and all that. There's people that aren't going to go. There's also clubs that are making you show proof of vaccination and all that stuff. And then people aren't going to go. So this is even when it gets back to normal, it's going to it's still going to hurt because you're not going to have the people at these shows. You're not going to draw the same crowds you did before. It's it's going to be a brand new normal. I was just talking to a client this afternoon who wants to get a booking agent and get out and do shows. And he's like, yeah, you know, I want to start pre-selling tickets. And I'm like, you got to understand in this covid world, ticket sales are completely different. People are not committing to buying a ticket six months in advance for a show now. Cause they don't know if the show's going to be here. They don't know who's going to be here. They don't know what the situation is going to be like. They wait. They don't commit to buying like they used to, you know, it's like, okay, I'm just going to wait for walk up. I'm just going to, you know, Hey, I'll, I don't need to buy my ticket for the hate breed show. Cause I'll just wait until the day before to make sure it's still coming to town. Then I'll go get my money's worth of, you know, buy the tickets and I'll go. So it's, it's, it's shaking everything up big time. 
well, sure, the promoters aren't want to, they're not, they don't want to take these risks on paying these big guarantees, not knowing that people are going to show up. Yep. So that's bad because they're not going to bring a lot of shows in. It's bad because they're going to use that le as leverage to not pay the bands what they would normally get paid. And at the end of the day, it's all bad for sure. Yeah. It is. Um, it's, it's, he, it's just, it's turning the whole business head over heels and everyone loses. I just, you know, sure. I just want it to get back to a point where bands can tour, can tour worldwide, can do shows. And, you know, there's minimal managed risk is what it comes down to. And I thought we were getting close. To I that. thought we were too. I, you know, I thought, you know, I, I'm sure you were the same way. Like, April of this year, you kind of felt like, oh, okay, it's actually looking good. It's easing up. And then whatever, when Delta hit in the summertime, it was like, fuck. Got a little eager there on being happy because the light at the end of the tunnel just got dark for a while. And no. Yeah. And I'll never understand why people make it political. You know, and I don't care what side you're on. It's just, it's a vaccine. It's people getting sick. It's people dying. Why does it have to be about politics? You know what I mean? This stuff kills people. It's, well, it, it, yeah, it's, it's that. And it's people who at least temporarily lost a job that could get their job back. If we can get things back in order, you know, two years well, down the road, two years down the road, a lot of these jobs are gone. They're going to have to find a new job somewhere else. Well, and I think the political part of it, too, is just people are living in fear on both sides of the fence. And, you know, like someone said, I thought it was really interesting the other day that people don't watch the news anymore to be informed about what's going on in the world. They watch the news so that they can find it's someone else who agrees with what they already believe. And, and I thought, yeah, you know, that there's truth to that. And I think that that's probably why it gets political, because people are angry for a lot of reasons. And they're... Plus, it's, let's face it, it's okay. So take the Minnesota Vikings. I was just listening to Paul Allen today on the radio. He's our local guy talking about the team. And there's just hashtag, 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 fire the coach, get rid of the coach, all this stuff, just nonstop. And he's like, but not one of these people give a reason as to why they think they should, he should be fired. And he sure. said, I almost wonder too, if maybe there's people who don't really necessarily believe that 100%, but they just pile on. Mob mentality. I was just going to say yeah. mob mentality. It's a mm -hmm. real thing, and it's going on now more than ever. Yeah, and he said, look, I don't believe that the coach should be fired, but at the same time, if you want to talk about it, and you can give me an argument and a, and a reason as to why, I'm happy to listen. If you're just going to say fire Zimmer for, and nothing else, it's like, I'm not listening to you because that's nothing more than trying to get everyone upset. And I think that's yep. what it is. So. Yeah. I agree. Uh, you know, I, and, and listen to all of our listeners, uh, you know, we didn't want to purposely end this on what some of you might think is a downer, but this was a great opportunity to pick the brain of Frank, who's a touring musician who's had to deal with all of this. And, you know, this is at least for me, I'll speak only for myself. This is a way of getting informed. I mean, yeah, you're there, you're living it, your opinion, your opinion about what happens with bands and tours matters a lot more than the average Joe Schmo chiming in on Facebook who has never been in a never band. Been tour. Uh, yeah. Never been on tour. I, I mean, I think that, I think that uh, the writings on the wall, I mean, it, like I said before, you have to protect yourself whatever in whatever way you want to do that, but it's not going away. You can go do a tour. We proved to everybody that you can go do a, two, a six week long tour and play to tens of thousands of people um, throughout that amount of time and make it work. But you have to, everybody's got to be accountable and responsible to make it work. You can't have people going off and screwing off and things like that. And that's, you know, I'm not saying that's why all these tours, other tours got canceled, but I mean, come on. Let's be realistic here. You know, um, if one tour goes three days and gets shut down and another one goes six weeks, my money's on the one that went six weeks that everybody was doing the things they were supposed to do. Yep. Yeah. Look at the Alice Cooper Ace Fairly Tour. Same thing. That made the whole run. Yep. Yeah. Ace, Ace, Ace was told by Alice, you can't sell meet and greets. You can't do meet and greets if you're going on this tour. Well, we kind of chuckled to ourselves and said, <laughs> 
Well, is it really bad that there's no guests allowed backstage at this tour? I mean, yeah, some it, people were loving that for right, sure. Right, I bet, this I late, bet. This late in our career, like we're we're done with all that. So I'm like, wow, this is awesome. Except you know, <laughs> you know, you're used to looking over and seeing some people watching you on stage play, and it's like the other bands were even hiding in their buses. Like when 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 we were we we weren't even really hanging out with each other, and we're friends with yeah. all these bands, Lamb of God, Trivium, Megadeth. It's like the fist bump. And that's it. Yeah. Some of these guys were walking around backstage with two masks on. I'm not, I'm not lying. And this is outside. Yeah. So nothing yeah. wrong with this that. I mean, uh, you know, that's, that's their career. Their, their career. job is to be in what you could describe as a, as a potentially dangerous situation in this day and age. And, you know, if they want to keep doing it, they got to be safe. Yeah. We're not making money off record sales. So it's like yep. the road is, the road is important. We still manage to do meet and greets, you know, and we just let everybody know with the meet and greets. Look, Masks on. Masks can come down during the photo. That's it. Fist bump the yep. man, six feet apart in the picture. All your stuff's pre-signed. Yep. There's ways to make it work if you're willing to go through the hassle of it. You know, we right. did it. And a lot of it sucks because it wasn't what we were used to. But I tell you what, being back on stage for 45 minutes a night was, was worth it. All that crap that we had to go through to be able to be out there and put a smile on people's faces and help them forget about this crap for a while. And for those people like us, this was a lot of their first times going to a show since the stuff hit. So, right. Yes, yep. it's good, good, good for you guys, Frank. Good for you yeah. guys. All right. Well, you know, we, we've now passed two hours. This was a great discussion though. Yeah, it really was. Um, Thank you, Frank. You know, Frank, awesome. Thank you so much for jumping in and, and sharing your cruise experience and touring experiences with us. And, uh, you know, I, I you know I say it with all honesty, you know, you've the door's always open. You ever want to come on? You ever want to talk about something? You ever got an idea? Whatever. Just reach out. You are always welcome on, on well, the show. I appreciate it. Absolutely. I love the show. Thank and, you. you know, I, I, and let me just say once more, people. If you felt like the end of that discussion was a bit of a downer, apologize. But I think it was a really great discussion, especially with Frank, because he is a touring musician. And I just really wanted to get his take on that Rolling Stone article. Well, no, and I'm glad we went there. And it's funny because right while we were discussing all of this, I received a message. Um, I want to get this right. From one of our listeners um, that uh, he, Michael Newman, he appreciates the fact um, that we talked about it last week. And then it's always a civil discussion because he said he is a huge fan of the Penguins, uh, Pittsburgh Penguins. And apparently they're getting hit really hard with COVID right now. The coach and some of the athletes and whatnot are down. And he said he just can't even read the comments because he says just one thing after another that's just negative, you know, hate filled. So he appreciates that we talk about this. So hopefully he's not the only well, one. That, that's good. I mean, my attitude is if he's bringing it up, there are others like that. So, um, but anyway, that was a great discussion with Mark for a little bit. And of course, with Frank for the whole show uh, about the Kiss Cruise. Um, homework wise, you know, if you went on the Kiss Cruise 10, what'd you think? I mean, give us, give yeah. us your, give us your review of the, of the cruise or what did you think of the set list? Did they do deep enough cuts? Did they do mm -hmm. enough deep cuts? Um, you know, did you think the cruise was a little better because there was fewer people on it? Was it nicer being able to walk right up to the bar and get on an elevator? Like Mark said. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, and listen, if you can keep it, non-political and non and keep it keep it respectful what are your comments about what frank had to say at the end there when we were talking about the rolling stone article with them yeah yeah what let's do think, what do you think we want to look as a nation and as 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 a people we need to have conversations discussion is important yes yeah, so just be respectful like michael said be kind be respectful share your opinion but don't you know yeah, we, we have zero time for bullshit, for political rants, for people who disrespect other people's views. Keep it, yeah. keep it civil and you can discuss anything you want. There you go. Um, all right. So, oh, you know what I got to do? Um, let me, let me, let me search real quick here. 
Um, oh, I need, we've, we've got uh, a 50th birthday party coming up in Atlanta. For Lisa. For, for Lisa. And I wanted to mention the details. So Brian, her husband, Mr. Lisa, um, said we can, we, can, we can mention this. Um, so where, oh, good. I can't find the details. Um, hold on, hold on. Let me keep looking here. He had messaged us, Brian, Tommy, Mark. Here we go. All right. So, uh, date of this would be Friday, December 3rd. And at the Wild Wing Cafe in Alpharetta, Alpharetta, Georgia, in, in Atlanta, they will be celebrating Lisa's 50th birthday party. Brian's band is going to play. Um, and he thought it would be a cool idea to have a little bit of a three sides gathering, three sides of the coin, Georgia gathering. So this is your official invite. If you show up around 8 p.m., band starts at 9, uh, at the Wild Wing Cafe, Alpharetta, Georgia, Friday, December 3rd, and help celebrate Lisa's 50th birthday party. You know, unfortunately, I know I'm not going to be able to make it down there. Um, I don't know about you, Tommy, or Mark, but let's get the listeners out there. Right. Show yeah. up. Yeah. I think that would be fantastic. Sing yeah. happy birthday to Lisa. Right. She would love that. So she would. That, that's your official invite. Head on out to uh, the Wild Wing Cafe, Friday, December 3rd, 8 p.m., and join Brian as he celebrates Lisa's 50th birthday party. Um, all right. So if you're on YouTube, please subscribe. If you're on Spotify, please follow us. Subscribe on iTunes. Uh, you know where to go to leave your homework. We'll see everybody next week. I think actually we've got another Kiss Cruise recap okay. next week with somebody else who was on there. Um, well, thanks that's for it. hanging with us. Yeah, this is a long show, but a lot of good stuff was talked about. So see you next week. So you love the show. Go to itunes.threesidesofthecoin.com and leave your review and rating of Three Sides of the Coin. Thanks.